Sige, na start. Hello and welcome to session number 28. Oh no, it's oh no, it's <laughs> <laughs> it's it says that not everyone is loaded music. There it is! Hey. Hey. <laughs> I think I have the right key. Ooh, nice. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for feeling in. Uh, oh, where's the game? There it is. Hi! Welcome back. We're not late. We were here on time. We were just very busy discussing our future plans. We were fighting. <laughs> One of us at the end of the session will leave the group. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... Survivor's Guide precedence. to Solidaria. Um. <laughs> <laughs> that would be an interesting concept for a campaign. You start with like 10 players, but every that session somebody like gets voted old. out. So it sounds like Survivor. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, but D&D. &D. Anyway. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, so, today. Mm, let's begin with a recap from Dennis. Okay, okay. <clears throat> Last time on <laughs> The Outlander's Guide to Lidaria. Chapter 1, The Meeting with Baryon Tsar. Baryon Tsar wants to talk to Talix privately, but then invites Pontifex and afterwards the others anyways. Baryon and Talix talk about Ghoul Borgak's private plan to send Talix on a mission to Lidaria to plant the seed of Vakanas without consulting the rest of the Jade Council before. Baryon is shocked to the core. With Baryon's okay, Pontifex takes a deep dive into Baryon's mind who then makes it clear that he is concerned about Eldaria being safe, since there is a chance of the land crumbling into the Sea of Chaos. Also, Pontifex asks Baryon about his parents, who Baryon has no information on, but wants to investigate. All of this leads to Brooke showing the seed to Baryon, who then takes him to a meeting with the deities of Plurna. Brooke tries to understand what's going on, but instead takes a lot of mental damage. At the end of the discussion, it is made clear that we have a bit more than three months to figure out what to do with the seed before Baryon has to report this, his findings to the rest of the Jade Council. Chapter 2. What are we doing with Saskaran? Not finished. Saskaran is being brought into the dragon wagon to be interrogated. Pip, Pip does his voodoo stuff to find out that Saskaran is lonely. Saskarin confirms that he is lonely, but so is Orm, and that's why they are friends. Saskarin wants us to follow him to Orm, if he can't have the book. No decision made by the group yet. Saskarin believes that he won't be killed by the group because he is like Tekka. And then I put down, I wouldn't be so sure about that, buddy, but the discussion we just had... <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Saskarin ends up back in the cell. Chapter 3, Sunny's Grave. After asking his friends multiple times in the past in-game week to come along, Pontifex is the only one who comes along. <laughs> <laughs> Sid, I, you... yeah? I thought it was a personal moment for you. I didn't... <laughs> well, you were invited. I got you, baby boo. Whenever you need me, <laughs> I will be there. <laughs> All I'm saying is, Sid might not be able to pick a favorite, but I have made my decision last week. <laughs> <laughs> Talix goes outside to look for horses. <laughs> Pips goes outside too. We will see what happens with that, I think, now. Brooke and Cass lead Pontifex to a graveyard, where they show him the grave of Sunny, who he had seen in Brooke's dream. Pontifex gets the okay to see in Brooke's mind, but something is stopping him from retrieving those memories. Pontifex and Brooke head back to the inn to face a tough decision. Dun dun dun. Did I miss something? Thank you! No, that I... should, sounds good to me. Yeah. Yeah, I... that should be good. Thank Ooh. you very much. Hmm. 
He had a... Um, let me put it over here. Um, best friend inspiration. See, that's the reason that Matt set himself next to me. <laughs> <laughs> we'll always be there for you. <laughs> Thank you. All right. 350 years and I have no friends. It is time to make one. <laughs> <laughs> Then let me bring back the city of Simlielon as uh, um, Brook, Pontifex, and Casimir are returning from their uh, trip to the, to the cemetery. Uh, boop! Oh, oh. And uh, um, Talix and Tekka are waiting for them at the, at the inn. Uh, Pip has snuck out on his own um, to do to do something. Uh, with him are only Squeak and the book. The book. Yeah, not really. Not really snuck out. He he did let everyone know yes. that he would just be going for a walk. Yeah, you're right. Um, okay. And so he he stepped out of the inn and he's he just started walking around town and as he's going he's just sort of like kicking dirt up and and letting his frustration out on like the ground around him and and every now and then just lets out a ah! and he reaches up and he he starts sort of like gripping at his neck and <sighs> a little out of breath and um Squeak says in Pip's mind, Hey, uh, you, you're doing all right. You know I can hear your thoughts, right? Uh, yeah, I, I know, I'm just... Uh, I'm so sick of this, and I, I need to get those ingredients for Granny, and I, we're just running out of time. Keep wasting time, and... Every week I'm away from home, I swear this rope feels a little tighter. Yeah. Well, what are you gonna do about it, huh? I mean, there's plenty of people around you could- No, I don't- I don't want to do that. I- I've been learning more about Granny's magic, and- I- I think I want to try something. Here, watch! And, uh, Pip- extends his arm up towards a tree and and sends Squeak uh, up on one of the branches. And then uh, while Squeak is watching, Pip uh, goes ahead and casts Bestow Curse on himself. And uh, Squeak watches as like these boils and blisters start to pop up on Pip's face. And he says, uh, I, I can, I can make these afflictions on people now and look he snaps his fingers and the boils and blisters start to disappear and Pip says if if I'm able to curse things like granny then I should be able to get rid of them too right right um yeah I mean I guess that should be possible here let me try something and uh, Pip sort of like hides behind one of the buildings or one of the trees and he uh, takes off the scarf and unravels the long rope with the five knots on it and holds up uh, the end of the rope where the last knot is tied and he's going to try and cast Remove Curse. <laughs> on the rope? Yeah, on one of the, one of the knots of the rope. Oh boy, okay. <clears throat> Explode. <laughs> Let me just bring this up. <laughs> Can you warn really me just, ahead you of die time. Or rumbling. I said that would be one person less. <laughs> yeah. Ah. 
There it is. <laughs> okay. Um, Pip, you can feel the end of the news begin to change. Um, it uh, no longer feels like a rope. It's starting to feel uh, softer. It's starting to feel... Um, it, it's, a, it's a different sensation under your, your hand and the color begins to change and the end of the noose has, uh, before your eyes, begins to turn into the head of a snake. Huh? Uh, which then tries to bite you. Oh. <laughs> Uh, you're not wearing a new armor yet, right? Nope. Okay. Uh, 19 to hit you. That hits. Okay. Um, and oh the, the snake head latches onto your right shoulder and um, you feel the, uh, this piercing pain um, spreading down your body and filling you with this weird... It feels both warm and cold at the same time. Let's um, take... Six piercing damage and seven poison. <clears throat> and the head of the snake just remains firmly attached to your shoulder. Ah! Squeak! Squeak, help me! Uh, <laughs> Squeak is going to leap down from the tree, and, uh, uh, I, I guess just try and, like, climb up Pip's shoulder and, and, and try and, uh, get this thing off of him. Uh, try and, like, bite it or something. <laughs> <laughs> is he biting it? Is he pulling it? Yeah, he'll, he'll try and bite its head. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> uh, have a squeak roll and attack. Okay. <laughs> this is not the right music for this. Man, mm. what a tragic <laughs> character death this would be. <laughs> oh no! <Yeah. laughs> oh god. <laughs> and so it begins. Throw it on the counter. <laughs> <clears throat> um, Squeak is uh, supposed to follow Pip's orders, but before that, he is supposed uh, to follow Granny's orders. And as he like moves in, and he's about to like <clears throat> deal deal a blow to the snake, he just stops short, and he knows that uh, uh, this act of defiance is something he cannot do. Squeak. Uh, Pip will will try and 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 wrestle the the head of the snake off of his shoulder. Uh <clears throat> we're going. I, I'm going to give you one, uh, basically a a, a grapple. Uh, sort of like a shaw, but they're all the same thing. They're all athletics versus my choice of athletics or acrobatics. Okay. Oh my god. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, take this. <laughs> really? <piece>. Oh god. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> you have to beat a 13. This is athletics? Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's fucked. Oh, oh my god, it's the same one! Oh, I'm you sorry, wasted my Nathan. Austin. I failed you! <laughs> oh, 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 where'd no. you put the die? I think I put it on your table. Sorry. Ah, okay, I found it. Thank you. Oh no. Um. Okay. Pip, this snake is firmly attached to your shoulder. Ultimately, it makes a little difference. The the part, uh, the majority of the 
uh, of the noose is still around your neck and it's just the end of it that instead of being comfortably tucked under your your, your scarf um, is now just latched onto your shoulder and it's just there you can still put the scarf back on and as long as you like adjust it a little bit to kind of go over your shoulder um, it would not be visible but it, it's there and it's uncomfortable and uh, it's also a little scary to just have ow. this this head of a snake that's just there. Ow, ow. I'm sorry. Granny, I'm sorry. Squeak, tell her I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Get this thing off of me. Sorry, kid. <laughs> you shouldn't have done that. Squeak. Mm. Pip will uh, reach in his bag and take out Orm and set the book on the ground and uh, and open up the pages. Orm? Orm, you there? Uh, there isn't a lot of space on this table. I'm going to go up here in the <laughs> river. <laughs> I'm going to go in the water. <clears throat> <clears throat> Uh, no, not really. Um, ow. Orm, do you, do you know anything about, about witches and their curses? Can you remember anything at all? Try to remember. <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> Are you using its feature? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what did it say? 5% chance? So, um, since uh, uh, it, it, it's a percentage roll, we can just do a d20 uh, and on an add 20 to success. But because it's a percentage, it can't be affected by um, inspiration dice. Okay. <clears throat> nope. <laughs> um. Okay. So, some witches are just different from others, huh? temporary then and Pip will just put the shawl back over his shoulders and uh he's just gonna start heading back I guess Which leads us to the party meeting up uh, at the Dragon Wagon. Do I have horses? Yes, you do. 
All right. You have five horses. Describe them all. Uh, four <laughs> of them are brown, and one is black with white spots. Hmm. That one must be the leader. <laughs> 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 all right, I tied. Uh, Talos has tied them all up outside. Have you been? Nice. Have you been talking to them? You know what? Yeah, sure. I'm gonna turn a spell slot to do that. Yes, the black one with white spots oh, wait, no, definitely no, no. thinks herself the leader of of the group. All right. The others don't what, agree with that. What's her name? Her name is Duchess. Duchess. Ooh. We're gonna be we're gonna become great friends, Duchess. <laughs> uh Talix will also go around town and try to get some treats for them. And food, I guess. How how much would that run me? Food for I the mean, horses? Like, yeah, like two days worth of food plus maybe like some fruit for treats. <clears throat> Carrots. Mm. Uh, pretty sure that's in the player's handbook. Da -da 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 -da. All right, we'll we'll address that later. Sure thing. And I'll go upstairs and tell everyone to come look at their new their new horses. <laughs> hmm. Hello, everyone. Uh, and boop. Oh. <clears throat> I have arrived. <laughs> <laughs> Behold! So it's like, all, are all five of those horses like really big horses, or is one of them a pony? <laughs> they're they're all adult size. I got what was available. They, uh, yeah, probably not probably not like big draft horses or anything. Just like not like war horse type things. Just mm -hmm. whatever you Poor whatever. Horses. I don't know how they're referred to. Yeah, Talisa will be twenty-five coppers. Did we figure out if? Pip has ever sitten or ridden a horse? Taken a ride on a horse? I don't hmm. think he has, nor is Tekla. Um, Professor, have you ridden? Do you Are you comfortable with riding horses? Uh, yes, of course. Uh, it's not my preferred mode of travel, but it is hard to live as long as I have and not use a horse. Okay. Uh, so maybe we have to Spend some time getting accustomed to it. Also possible that uh, Tekka and Pep ride together. <laughs> <laughs> How do we begin? Well, usually I do a training montage. <laughs> <laughs> At, at first, it's very humorous because you're like failing at even the simplest things, like you climb on a horse and somehow get turned around upside down. <laughs> somehow the saddle inverts. Yeah, you you try to saddle the horse and you end up tangling yourself up in it. And you're dangling from your ankles. But over okay, time, but... Uh, over time, you start to do some. You know, basic steps, and I'm in the distance, just giving you a stern nod of approval. <laughs> There's like multiple smash cuts of the group figuring out how to actually mount the horse, and then back to Pontifex, who's in the library reading a book titled How to Ride a Horse. <laughs> he goes back and forth between this slowly growing pile of books as he's finishing through them, like <laughs> horse riding for dummies, how to ride a horse, the cavalry and you. <laughs> and then as Talix gives the firm nod of approval, Pontifex <laughs> gives the, the nod of, yep, I got it. <laughs> leaves the library. <laughs> you seem less uh, excited about this than I expected. Uh, is, are you, are, is your horse being nice to you? Um, uh, yeah, just, they're just not as, not as talkative as, as some animals. It's the Duchess. <laughs> My Duchess is an earful, for sure. 
They learn not to talk in her presence unless talked to. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm I'm not uh, I'm not super good at at horse yet. Alexi, no, horses cool. are having like full on conversations with you. Oh. <laughs> yeah. You learned all of their names and uh, all of their personalities. I'll try to use that to the advantage of helping these two. <laughs> do, we, do we need to roll checks or anything, or...? Um, everybody can roll animal handling. As, like, Everyone? a group. Yeah, it's like a group check. All right. Um, with Talix having advantage uh, because of, I... like, just being able to talk to them. Okay. Uh, well, let me... Normally I'd give that to Pip, too, but not today. <laughs> not today. Oh, nice. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, whoa, what happened, everyone? This Yikes. is so canon. <laughs> yeah. I'm okay, missing, well, missing Tekka. 20. <laughs> Come on, Tekka. Do your, do your thing. There we go. <laughs> Tekka's better than Talix today. <laughs> okay. Um... Uh, yeah, Tekka takes to it pretty quickly. Uh, of course, it, it still takes him a moment, but the horses seem uh, very calm around him. Um, and they're, they're giving him no problem. So for him, it's just a matter of getting used to how uh, to the saddle and uh, to just keep in balance. But uh, uh, with, with, a, with half an hour of practice, it's comfortable enough where he can easily lead the horse you know, to follow Talix's. Um, <laughs> but besides the two of them, for everyone else, Brooke, you just, you just came back from the cemetery and your mind is just a little bit elsewhere. Uh, Pontifex seems to have picked all the wrong books somehow. <laughs> um, whoever wrote them must have never met a horse before. There's a flashback <laughs> to like the, the spine of the cavalry in you and it's actually just a dragon chess book. <laughs> <laughs> I get distracted. <laughs> uh, and Pip, the horses seem scared of you. Uh, they are... Every every time you come close, they just step away. They neigh nervously. Um, they, they, they don't seem to... Uh, they just don't want to allow you uh, on their backs. Aren't you really good with animals, Pip? What happened? Um, Are you not good? Do you not like horse? I I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. I smell weird. I. Mm hmm. It's under a lot of stress. Don't add to it. Ultimately, we almost died. <laughs> that too. True. Ultimately, it takes the group uh, uh, a bit longer than Talix would have liked uh, uh, to get everyone on their horse. And uh, um, you'll have to travel slowly, uh, mainly because Pontifex is at great risk of getting ki uh, kicked off at any moment. Uh, and. Um, perhaps it's the weight of his armor and the weight of just Brooke in general that the, the horses disagree with. Um, and, and Pip, for you, you just, you're trying to, st as Talix just gets you on one of the horses, you're trying to stay as still as possible uh, and make no noise and just try your best to make the horse forget that you're up there. <laughs> Also, thank you Work for posting that. Work with the equine nuisance. You're making me look bad. <laughs> <laughs> Why does that horse? What's wrong with that? Why are the Why are the nostrils on the right side? So that's what that's what painters painted horses when they haven't really seen a horse. Before. It only has one oh, nostril. No. So those are the illustrations that Pontifex <laughs> in the books that Pontifex was reading. What the? In the book you had forward-facing eyes, but now I am to see they are on the side. 
<laughs> I learned to ride the wrong horse. Uh, oh, whatever. I learned Unless... to ride the predator horse. You are the prey horse. Have <laughs> <laughs> oh, you heard an <laughs> There it is. <laughs> I want uh, to hang this on, on one of our walls. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do it, yes. <laughs> uh, I'll work on we, it later. We need to fill up these walls. <laughs> but now it's going to be over here, we'll, staring we'll at me. We'll have to put the, the horse boat on there, too. <laughs> also, for a more wholesome thing, you should actually put, like, Penis's... Dreams, yeah. I think. Oh, true. Yeah, we can put those. Oh, as long yeah. as you... <laughs> All right, I'm gonna just make a note. <laughs> oh yeah, we have all of Dennis's art put on the walls and stuff. That, that's nifty. That's a great idea. All right, remind me after. Gonna be right after next stream. to the sunrise. Hmm. <laughs> 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 I think we're just gonna end up having like this whole wall over here just dedicated to Dennis's art. <laughs> <laughs> to the the boat wall. I'm, I'm gonna remove one of the windows just to add more portraits. No, yeah, we don't need windows. It is like the Sims. <laughs> windows are for <laughs> people who go outside. We play D and D. Okay. Never touch the grass a day in my life. So, um, for clarity, that whole conversation about Saskia's fate, um. Does it happen before you leave, after, or after, um, or after? I think it would be, have to be before we leave, because we were mm -hmm. looking for, like, something to do in the okay. moment. So there's, there's, like, a moment when, uh, during the training montage to learn how to, uh, how to ride horses, uh, when you're all just taking a break, uh, and it's a perfect time to have a conversation. <clears throat> So, we still have one more problem to deal with, right? What are we doing with Suskaren? I mean, he doesn't... your friends have a safe jail, right? I mean, we can't leave him there forever. Orm will continue to send his forces. We should confront it sooner than later. Yeah. In one more level, I get fireball, and that could perhaps increase our chances to deal with Orm appropriately. No, you're right, you have a point. Right now, we have some control over him, but what if he gets loose again? What if the other Orm breaks him out? Uh, Brooke seemed to uh, allude to these phantom places being uh, fairly secure. The town, knows I look out. the town knows to look out for the metal animals now. So hopefully a lion doesn't get back in here. Well, I hate to be that guy, but... Uh... Seeing everything that we've learned in the last day and it's the responsibility we have now. We already have like a big werewolf coming after us, potentially killing us. We don't really need uh we don't really need Orm or Stuskaren to basically turn on us at the same time that the thing shows up. From my experience, these things tend to happen at the worst times. None of you are fighters. I mean, we've defeated the wolf once, and we've defeated Suskaren once. But I'm pretty sure that was the closest to death all of us have come, right? Uh, in recent years, yes. Do we think we can get anything else out of him? Uh, 
I'm not one to doubt uh, Pip's methods, so... If he was not able to get more, I would assume he cannot get more. Do we think that there's a chance that he would come to our side and not go after us anymore? See us as his friend instead of Orm? Well, I seem to observe a sort of a personality split in one of which was much more amicable than the other, so... Perhaps we simply asked him at a bad time and we only wait for the more friendly form Suskaren thing to come out. And yeah, I don't know. Can't remain angsty forever, so perhaps we just leave him with the phantoms and I don't know. Um, is there any phantoms that uh, can simply interrogate him while we are away and then send you information with world point? You know? Uh, look for a shift in demeanor. If he is suddenly more friendly, then take the opportunity to question him, write down all of the questions and responses, and send them to us accordingly. Hmm. I mean, that would, re that would require someone to be there all the time, right? Uh, interrogate him at your convenience. Understand it is a big ask, but... Uh, he almost uh, murdered an entire colony, so... This is sort of the Phantom's M.O., no? It is. That's it. I mean, if it's anyone but Cass, then... There's a chance whatever we are dealing with will get more or less public information. I trust Cass. But I don't <clears throat> know everyone in the Phantoms as well as him. Well, I guess believe in the ones that he believes in. I think it is preferable to just uh, ending the story there. You know, there is always more he could tell us, more we could learn. I'm not one to burn a book. So, you want us to stay in contact with him? Uh, I so that's... don't wish to stay in contact with Suskarin any longer than necessary, but I believe that uh, given proper magic inhibiting accommodations, uh, skilled individuals at the asking persuasive questions, I think there is more we can learn. He seems to know more than he told us. I would have to ask Cass for that. I'm gonna be honest, I'm... I have a feeling that this will come and bite us in the future. He's likely. There's an old professor at the university, uh, Professor Murphy, and he always used to say, anything that can go wrong will. <laughs> Seems like a wise man. <laughs> he drank a lot. Huh. So what are you saying, Brooke? I, you don't want to leave him in jail, or you do? I... I mean, if the choice is between leaving him in jail, or going to Orm ourselves with him, I would leave him in jail. But from what I've seen so far, I don't think he will... I don't think he will actually ever be on our side. I think he will always try to get our arm, and he will always put us in danger. So the and only way to deal with the Ten Hearts arm is is to go on his terms? I think the only way to deal with the problem completely, or well, at least weaken arm, would be to remove <clears throat> would be to remove Restaskaran. Hello. 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 Welcome back. Here. All right. We're here. Are you good? Yeah. Hi. 
I put my headphones have... on and there was like silence for like five seconds. Oh, oh. we might have lost Matt though. Oh. Oh. We lost well. Matt. Matt. I... No, no. We're waiting, Red. Uh, I, mean, I think it's time to reach a conclusion. I think we kind of know where it's going, so... Th- Alright. He'll, he'll rejoin us. Anyways. I mean, I, I stand by my point. Same with Varian. We are a group and we decided that we are making a group decision. I think it would be... I think it would be the best idea to get rid of him completely. But... I don't have any pity for the man, really, but... Executing a prisoner... I don't think that's something we sh- we can do. I mean, in this case, it's... Most likely either him or us, right? If you're okay with him potentially getting freed, or turning on us, or at worst killing one of us, and living Wait, with so us. so you're saying you don't have faith in your people? I mean, I do have faith in them, but... As Professor... Barney? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Barney's law, yeah. Barney said, if something can go wrong... <laughs> Well, I just remember Professor Barney being much more loving in general. I had a very different message whenever I heard from him. No, but don't get me wrong. It's it's, it's a gut feeling that that us that says that this will go wrong. So I don't want to live with the consequences of what this brings with. We already have a lot of on our plate. But I also understand that this is not a decision anyone wants to make, right? Taka, you said you wanted to to deal with this sooner rather than later. What did you mean by that? If we leave it as it is, Orm will continue to chase us. To send those beings after us. I think I agree that we should deal with this Ten Heart figure as soon as we leave, as soon as we're ready to leave Simlilon. But should we really take one of his allies along with us? Rook shakes his head. I think that would be very foolish. How do we find this orb? Well, he tells Hesker, and either he tells us where he is, and we bring him the book, or they won't get the book, and he will, well, not be able to bring in the book either. Alright? You're saying that we get the information from him under threat of his life, and then kill him. Well, I thought... Hmm. Well, I would say Are either we the or... Baddies? I mean... <laughs> you were wondering why we have skulls on our helmets? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, when did that get there? Okay. <clears throat> conclusion. Yeah, conclusion. I guess we'll leave him here for now. I will... Well, I will let Cass know that we will be back, and then afterwards we deal with him and Orm first. Right? Okay, let's... maybe we can see if there's any other way to get Orm's location without walking into a death trap. Blind. But yeah. I want I want to leave him in prison for now. I definitely don't want him wandering around, and definitely don't want to take him with us as we 
resolve other matters. It's... he's... It's too much of a risk. How much time do we have till we meet the Aetara? Oh, less than a day. <laughs> now, I think, probably. What time is it? Um, yeah, you have... You should get going. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's around lunchtime. All right, give me a paper and something to write and a leaf castle letter. All right. Tell us okay. we'll provide that. You're just letting him know to, like... <clears throat> Keep an eye on Saskara and any guests are going to be back within the day. Yeah, and I will put also in that that if he can get anything out of him, he should. Yeah, not not within the day, though. After we deal with the Aetarabah, so that's going to be like a couple days at least. Don't forget to mention the personality swings. This is, you know, if he's mm -hmm. being a mm -hmm. who's little shit, you're probably not, not uh, going to learn anything. But if he's being friendly, then perhaps. Okay, okay. I'm writing that. <laughs> Putting the letter to Kailu. Telling him to give it to Cass. Uh, yeah, sure. Kailu can do that. Um... Hold on a second. I need to stop putting this in my dice tray. I need it. Okay, yep. He just uh, takes the letter and nods and he lets you know that he will make sure it gets to him right away. Okay. And you guys are ready to go. Yeah, we have no clue how long we're riding for, right? We're just riding along the river until... Oh, we yeah, uh... To the place. <laughs> One more thing. Talix wants to buy... some sort of supplies and, like, load one of the horses down with it. Or... all of our horses. What supplies? I don't know. Uh... Let's just get... Um, I don't know, uh, some, some food and, I don't know, any suggestions, everyone? With, like, uh, with some clothing? Some cloth, maybe? Yeah. What, what did you say, Sid? Some cloth? Cloth? Yeah, bundles of cloth. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just like, you know, a peace offering. Uh, Talos is willing to spend like up to, well, I don't know how much we can carry on the horses, but like he's willing to spend like up to 50 gold on this. Yeah, Tegan would be willing to share that. You could get like uh, something like, like five square yards of silk. Well, nothing fancy, it doesn't have to be fancy. I'd rather well, uh, get like sorry, more practical. Up to five square yards of silk. <clears throat> yeah, silk is, like, ridiculously expensive. What, what, we would just do, why not, like, cotton cloth or yeah, cotton something cloth. like that? Because um, you said up to 50 gold, so I went with, like, the most expensive thing. Oh, no, um, no, no. We, I'd rather get something that's, like, very practical and would help them a lot. Uh, especially since they're probably recovering from losing several of their people and birds. <laughs> Uh, all right. To make things simple, rations are, are the same price as a DPHP, and as for cotton, it generally comes as a five silver pieces per square yard. Um, Just yeah, what a, as much as we can load on our horses and afford within the budget of fifty gold, whatever you think. Um, I. <clears throat> Should I just yeah. <laughs> Should I just deduct 50 gold? Yeah, okay. Uh, do you want to do a 25 split? Or All right, sure. All right, sure. Cool. You basically have like a bundle on each horse. Yeah. Uh, just Maybe medicines too, them. If, I, if there's like, yeah. Maybe what? Yeah, that's... Medicines too. Okay. Yeah. 
general thing is I didn't think too hard about this. Okay. <clears throat> All, right. All right. And then on we travel. How difficult is this terrain to, terrain to maneuver? Is it easy to see ahead? Is it a heavily forested area? Um, you guys have already seen <clears throat> what the landscape looks like when going up the river mm -hmm. to up to Simlielon. Um, this is the kind of uh, to to your uh, to the east in particular, which in, in this case is going to be to your left. Uh, the terrain is very good for for uh, very easy for horses to maneuver uh, on through uh, because it's all just very gentle hills. Um, no steep inclines either way. Uh, in, in this case, you're traveling slightly um, more downward uh, than up, but it's, um, it's never too steep. And it's, uh, it's very grassy with very few trees, very few obstacles. You can see really far ahead. <clears throat> oh. Uh, Talix's message. <clears throat> uh, so I'm looking for the exact wording, but he he asked uh, to meet along the river around the same spot where um, would he attacked you. Yeah. Okay. Along the way, uh, you know, aside from keeping an eye out, maybe we can ask some birds if they have seen any red beaks around. Uh, is Talix doing this? Uh, he can. I can cast it as a ritual, actually, so I don't have to expend a spell slot for it. Oh, okay. Can... Yeah, that works. Every once in a while, you just stop for a little bit. Uh... Uh, and you ask for directions. Uh, can I have another animal handling check from you with advantage? Okay. Meanwhile, uh, Pip, mm -hmm. you take seven points of poison damage oh. uh, on oh. the way. You're you're feeling a little weaker as time goes by. Uh, you're starting to feel a little dizzy, and it's hard to actually like, keep your balance on the horse. And the, the horse, um, the one you have, is called uh, Thunderstep. <clears throat> and uh, despite his name, he seems... Well, uh, this applies to all the horses, but he is just um, straight up scared of you. Uh, and just barely uh, keeping his composure as you're riding him. Can, uh, can we stop to use the restroom soon? Uh, yeah, if you need to take a break, that's fine. Uh, seeing you that, got to go, you got to go. Seeing that role, I come to realize that Talix was... It was impossible for him to fail. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> a DC-10 role. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um... <clears throat> uh, here and there, there's a few small birds that let you know that uh, they have seen the big ones, the ones that they know to avoid, the ones with the red beak, um, all gathering southward of here, uh, just in, in, large, uh, in large groups. Can I figure out, uh, can I suss out about how large? Um, like, let's 20? see. 50? <laughs> <laughs> uh... With that role, no, not really. They just tell you a lot, but many could mean different things for little birds like this. Like five oh. could be many for them. All right. Oh, well, uh, it seems they've they've heeded our request. My request. Hopefully, this is a good thing. Talix. Yep. What will you say to them? Uh, 
I just want them to know that... That peace is possible, that we can share the lands, that we can try to establish communication and understand one another, you know? Is that... More than anything, though, I just want to learn. They, they say they have rights to the territory of this river. We don't even know what that means to them. I want to understand them better. If they give you reason for their rights to this land, will you give them? Oh, I'm not here to challenge them on it. I think it's important that we establish communication. <clears throat> uh, whatever I learn, I'm gonna go back to the Silver Claw and Simlilon and share it. And maybe, you know, just that first step of learning, listening, that's first step and maybe coming up with a better solution than what's been going on so far. Which is an ongoing war. Well, not you are right that it should not stay as it is. Ensure what? that they know that these offerings are not a price to pay for the lives lost. That it is only a greeting. A beginning. What are we doing if they are as aggressive as they usually are and don't care for what you have to say? Well, then I guess we try to leave, but I'm going to do everything I can to prove good intentions. <laughs> do we drop our weapons? Is there a way we can know that we would be safe in doing so? No. That might be too much. At least at first. Until we know more. Until we see them. Then we act moment by moment. I'm afraid I don't know anything better to do than that. Pip, are you ready to begin moving? So uh, we were we were stopped that whole time, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I okay, it. so yeah, Pip had uh, in that time run off sort of to the edge of whatever cover he could find if there are like trees mm -hmm. nearby. Um, and heads over to the other side of one of the trees and, and just uh, presses his back up against the tree and slides down and he's, he's breathing uh, rapidly and just pulls a dagger out of his bag and then he speaks uh, parcel tongue, I guess, <laughs> and says Hi, ah, yes <laughs> Please, Granny I'll get your ingredients today no matter what, I'll get your ingredients today. Just let me go, please. I'm sorry. Roll a persuasion check. Uh, 
That was creepy. <laughs> Thanks for that. <laughs> it was like weird ASMR. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um, Pip, the snake, the head of the snake, does not let go of your shoulder. Um, but you do feel it's it's um, uh, it's grasp lessening ever so slightly, but it's still there. Mm. Okay. And then Pip will head back. And then Tekka asked what? <laughs> <laughs> Pip, are you ready to begin moving? Mm -hmm. Then we go. All right. Okay. Uh, Pippa needs help from Talix to get back on the horse, but after a few minutes of just very cautiously um, working with him and uh, <clears throat> uh, having to come on the horse and just lift the child onto onto it, uh, um, you're able to resume your journey. And with the... Are you feeling sick? I'm, I'm just a little, a little drained from what happened with Saskirin, that's all. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Dennis. Look, we'll we'll talk more about it once we finish all this, okay? Mm -hmm. Alright. Pip will just lean down and and uh as much as he can get close to the, the horse's head, just say <laughs> I'm not gonna hurt you, I promise. Just just keep moving and I won't bother you, okay? <gasps> to the one intimidation check. <laughs> <laughs> um, Just keep moving and no one gets hurt. <laughs> the the horse's reply is just he's just begging to not be bitten, please. He just doesn't want to be bitten. Me neither, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> With, uh, with the directions given to Talix by the occasional critter on the way, um, the, not, not directions, just like uh, words, um, the closer you get to the meeting point, the more the animals all agree that yes, they've seen these large birds and the people that travel with them are coming right this way, right this way. Um, and then... Uh, as you keep on asking every once in a while, uh, the animals begin to tell you that uh, um, the the Atara, the Atarava that they've seen actually were more and more east. Like the closer you get to the meeting point traveling south, the more the animals tell you they went east. They all went east. Um, like they were at the river and then left? Uh, no, more like they never actually got to the river. Can I figure out about how far from the river they are? Uh, do you want to try um, to like follow the the directions of the creatures to get to where? Oops, not here. Um, yeah, I guess so. Okay. Basically, as you're traveling down the river, uh, as you, the meeting point will be over like here, and uh, mm. starting from this point, they start telling you that they went east. Uh, so it sounds like they're more like somewhere in this area. Uh, so you can either continue traveling to the designated meeting spot, uh, or you can start like heading that way. Well, they might. Okay, so I'm hearing that they aren't 
where we agreed to meet right now, but where the animals are telling me they are, that might be their own campgrounds or something. That might be where the whole tribe is. I don't know if we should go there or just wait for them at the river. What do you think would be better? To enter their home without invitation. To be taken as a sign of aggression. I agree. I see no need for subtlety. So we wait at the river? I'd say so. Okay. Alright. Alright. So you had... <clears throat> you keep heading south, just following the river to the um, to the spot you had designated as uh, uh, the, your your meeting place, and uh, um, as you as you're getting closer and closer, it comes a moment where you can kind of see that's roughly where uh, the stretch of river uh, where the incident happened. Um, you recognize a few landmarks. Uh, um, a few hills. There is some uh, rocky -er hills directly to your left um, that are uh, pretty distinctive. Um, so you know you're roughly at the right place. And soon enough, as you continue southward, you eventually spot a single red, uh, red beak um, just standing near the edge of the water, uh, almost like it's keeping watch. Just the bird. Just one bird. Is it metal? <laughs> <laughs> it's not made of metal. Is it a gnome? Gnome bird. <laughs> it's not a gnome bird, but bird. um. Inside check. <laughs> a little woman. <laughs> if not, we're good. <laughs> I'm gnome druid. I know it in my soul. <laughs> Um, do I do I recognize the red beak? I don't know how close we are at this point. Um, eventually, you get close enough that you recognize his red beak as the one you spoke to. Hmm. At that point, you're no more than say like fifty feet away from it to be able to tell um, this one apart from any others you met before, um, and it's. Watching you? Uh, I will hail it. You have a um, speak with animals currently? Um, uh, yeah, currently I can, on? Yeah, I can cast it again. Yeah, you've been just refreshing it every once in a while, whenever you needed it. Um, and once you're once you're close enough, uh, um, this. Bird, did you get the name last time? I don't think so. Okay. So I have it in my notes, but I don't remember if he ever introduced himself <laughs> to you. I don't think I asked the bird's name. Okay. Ah, uh, that's fine. Um, once you're close enough and you say hello, uh, he... The, the bird straightens his posture a little bit and uh, um, flaps its wings and uh, says Our leader has agreed to meet you Follow me okay. And as Redbeak takes flight it begins to head east Well, I guess we're to follow it. This seems like a great idea. Talix gives a big thumbs up. <laughs> All right. The bird, the red beak, leads you uh, further east, roughly getting uh, in that area of terrain where the animals were indeed telling Talix that uh, uh, red beaks in the Tarava had been gathering lately. 
uh, the hills green with lush, with lush grass become spotted with boulders and you start uh, having to um, slow down your horses a little bit as they need to um, be very careful with uh, where they're stepping. Uh, you are soon flanked by tall rocky hills and the wind howls angrily. It's the only noise in this otherwise very silent area. As the terrain you're walking on begins to slope upward, you see figures ahead. The red beak you've been following flies a little bit closer to you, a little bit further down. Um, stops near you, just flapping its wings to, ma to maintain its position in the air and tells you to stay. Then he uh, flies ahead towards the figures. And a few seconds later, they begin to approach you. Uh, as they approach, you recognize the young girl who attacked your ship, uh, uh, the ship you were on a few weeks ago. Next to her is a very old Itaraba man whose hair and feathers have turned white with age. There are many armed men and women following them closely. And soon, as you're... Um, Beginning to tense up a little bit, you spot others on the ridges to your right and to your left, standing dozens of feet above you, watching closely. As you nervously look behind you, it looks like you're not surrounded by all sides, as the way back uh, is still clear, at least for now. Uh, let me bring this in. Uh... And you can place your minis. Ooh, okay. <laughs> there are a lot of zone objects to recall. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. You can place your minis roughly into this area. All right, guys, I think we can take this. <laughs> Why are they all holding their swords up against us? <laughs> <laughs> Why are there Two so girls many just was terrifying. Just let us know what would happen if we decided to. Now there's it. 15 girls of Rivia. <laughs> Wait, are you trying to send us a message without? <laughs> I don't mean to make an assumption, but it might be because we killed some of them. <laughs> yep. Um, In the last few days, we have become more powerful than you could possibly <laughs> imagine. You should put down your arms immediately. Yeah, just saying. This is a this is a great fireball. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad no. our spellcasters both multi quest. <laughs> yeah. Oh wait, no, not you. I forgot. But you're not. You don't have fireball. Yeah, and um, I'm out of spell slots. It's at this point. <laughs> It's at this point that the Itara, the ones uh, uh, to your left and to your right, the ones above you, uh, they start to do something you didn't expect. They, and the Red Beaks with them, begin to sing. Or at least it's something uh, closely resembling singing. It's a form you're familiar with. They are, uh, the Itara currently sound more like birds than men, imitating the varied sounds of their animal companions using both their voice and powerful whistling. It's beautiful. Somewhat intimidating as well. Uh, the girl you've met, <laughs> the girl you've met before, um, at this point is about uh, uh, two dozen feet away from you. And she crosses her arms. She's visibly unhappy to be here. Um, but after glaring at your group for a few seconds, she sighs and she begins to speak. Uh, she speaks in Italian. Uh, which means that Alex is the only person who can understand her. But you do have the book now. Um, mm. So for the purpose of communication, the rest of you, uh, as long as you're all together around the book, uh, uh, you get like an instantaneous translation of everything that's being said. Uh, and anything that you guys say, Talix can relay. Um, so for simplicity, this is all always implied, unless at any point your group is split up and not looking at the book. Okay? Yep. Uh, sure. hip, hip hands the book over to Talix. <laughs> uh, I, I can understand him just fine. Here. <laughs> Talix will hand it to Brooke. <laughs> <laughs> 
Poor Orm. Nobody wants him. Um, <laughs> Alright. The, when the girl speaks, it's clear that she's reciting something that she has committed to memory as she says, We welcome you in our lands for today. You may enter now and you must leave at any time before sunset. No harm shall be done to you while you are our guests, as long as no harm is done to us. We will now exchange gifts as a symbol of our truce. Uh, the old man approaches your group. Uh, in each hand, he holds a mask. And he hands both of them over. Oh. Um, one is a feathered, feathered mask in the shape of a, of a bird's head, and the other is a bulky one made of stone. It's very thick, uh, blank, and featureless. Uh, the man himself, uh, um, he smiles at you. Seems friendly. These are lovely. Um, what is the meaning of these masks? Um, I need the Talix to roll an inside check. Okay. Should have this number memorized by now. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Um, I can't roll high today. <laughs> The, the man has no visible reaction to um, to your words. It's almost like when when you try to speak a language that someone else doesn't understand, but um, mm -hmm. even even more than that, uh, the, the girl, who is just a small distance behind him, uh, yells, Just take them! Uh, yeah, Talix will just smile and nod and <laughs> take them and hand them back to the others to inspect. Uh, and then he'll kind of bring forward the horses. I'll let, let's show them. The man is holding out his now empty hands like he's expecting <laughs> to receive something. Oh, he wanted something more personal. Oh no. Uh, well, Talix will... Uh, okay, Br can you all help uh, bring forward the supplies? Sure. And I don't know if I have anything. I'll help taking it off the horses and presenting it in front of him. Uh, so you're starting to unload these bundles of cloth, uh, baskets of medicine, food, and it's it, you're you're going to each horse and just putting everything down on the ground. And uh, the the old man seems uh, surprised by this and so is everyone else and as he turns back uh, and glances at the young Gitara um, she after a moment of hesitation just also turns back and it's quiet um, they don't exchange any words but by now you you know uh, that these people can communicate without having to speak and you can see whenever that happens they tend to always look at each other and you can see their expressions shifting and sometimes they gesture um, so as an invisible conversation takes place, many of these people uh, begin to approach, none of them with the weapons drawn. Well, a couple, but it's more like they, they keep aside and it's more like as a, more like as a warning. And uh, they begin to pick up all the things that you have brought and pull them back. As the old man steps back to uh, next to the to the young girl, uh, the two of them have a brief, silent conversation, and uh, uh, she says, <sighs> "Okay, introductions. I am Vadra. He's Pedric, and he speaks through me." Understood. Um. I am most humbled and grateful for your warm welcome here. Okay. Yeah, um, Grandpa says that your offering is very generous. I wanted... Well, we wanted you to see the value of, uh, of friendship <laughs> between our people. 
Right. But I'm not here to make any requests of you. I simply wish to learn more of your people, your customs. And, uh... Well, I'd love to know about these masks. <laughs> um, the two of them exchange a look, uh, and then she says, Ah, uh, okay. Uh, I found one of those masks, and we found the other one a while ago, and they're magic, and they're old, and they're yours. Oh, well, okay, fine. Um... I can tell you about one of them. Um, the one with with the feathers. It's uh, you can. Oh, I don't think they know about that. Okay, okay. Um, so some birds can mimic the sounds that they hear, um, including voices, and that's what that mask lets you do. Oh, wow. The other one is too powerful and I can't tell you about it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, may we approach closer and have a more friendly conversation? Maybe I can meet the rest of your family and tribe? She says, no. Then she looks towards her grandfather and says, fine. <coughs> um, yeah. Everyone else want to join me? <laughs> yep. Sure. This is so tense. <laughs> <clears throat> I'll join. Pip staggers forward. <laughs> <laughs> By the Drops. way, Brooke is probably away while well, inspecting the mass too. He's probably more concerned about his surroundings. I Which don't know is, what that is very fair. Just Every once in a while there's a shadow over you and you look up and some of the red beaks are uh, occasionally moving from one uh, from one edge to the other or just flying off where others are joining in. Um, but most of the people that are positioned around you um, they're, they're, they're staying where they are. It's Brooke, it's pretty clear to you that most of them are ready for combat. Um whether they would be willing to attack you without provocation or if they are just there to to defend themselves that's your guess okay hip, hip just make sure that like the red beak amulet is visible on his chest as if like that makes it seem like he's more friendly to red beaks mm -hmm. red beak people kind mm -hmm. Uh, Talix is going to go ahead and take out his journal. Uh, would you like to see some of the illustrations I've made? I've, uh... I've illustrated some of your birds as well. This is... one of the reasons I've come here. I want to learn more about all people of this land. And... Your people have been some of the most difficult to learn of. Um, Pedrick wordlessly approaches, and it, it just he's he's looking, he's squinting a little bit, uh, uh, but uh, looking in the journal you're holding. Um, while while the young girl um just goes, Pfft. yeah, okay, I have a question for you then, for your people. Sure. Why are you here?
Hmm. <laughs> I mean, don't you guys have a whole world for yourselves? Two, actually. Oh. There is no reason why they should remain segregated at all times. There should always be a bridge, at least. We've come here, well, to learn and maybe to gain. Not is our very presence here such an intrusion? It seemed like there was a lot of lands that was free. Yeah, that's the thing. Sure. Uh, everyone is allowed on the peninsula, as by our laws, nobody's forbidden entrance. But that doesn't mean that we can't make your stay as miserable as possible. This is all we have. This is all that the Atara have. So in my opinion, it kind of sucks that you're here. Plus... We all know what you're doing. You come here and you cut down our trees and you build your little cities and you're taking from us. You don't bring anything. What would you have us bring? Don't believe it was ever communicated. I don't know, stuff. Well, or these supplies to your liking. <laughs> if we could be friends, uh, our people could trade. You could see more things like this. <clears throat> Maybe Pontifex, you want to offer your knowledge. Right, but uh, I'm not one to offer knowledge to those who don't want it. Uh, I feel like these hostilities are being uh, pressed on to us with no participation from our end. Uh, if you wish to be enemies for the sake of being enemies, that is one thing, but uh, I feel as if you believe we have hostile intentions when we do not. Uh, Talix, whenever the rest of the party translates, if at any point you want to not translate something or change the wording in some manner you let me know that's a possibility um uh, but otherwise i'm always i'm always just acting on the assumption that everything is coming through you know the way it's being said yeah i mean he he'll remove the snark from the tone attacked us first yes you pirate fuck <laughs> You pirate! Uh, yeah, I would just say, yeah. Leave out everything except one. for a pirate Look, fuck. Hey, uh, <laughs> sir, uh, he, he, uh, <laughs> he says that we're not hostile. <laughs> <laughs> tell it, you could also tell her that not all of us the our own our old world as our home anymore also true or can go back or want to go back not everything is good there i mean mm. some of us here some of us here don't have that old world anymore and some of us were born here like this young man and this uh young man <laughs> Pip gives his best smile, but it's more of a grimace at this point. <laughs> um, uh, uh, Talix, it's uh, the more you talk to her, more it seems it, it it seems clear to you that Vajra didn't expect uh, a tribute of this size, um, and that the the general hostility she's showing you. Uh, is both personal, but also just aimed at uh, plurians in general. Um, and you're ki you kind of have shown her more kindness than she would have expected from uh, uh, 
from your people. Look, I have to be honest. I know we're only five people. We certainly don't represent the whole of any of the colonies that have been founded here. I'm here on a personal mission to learn. And I want to tell my people about your own and about your beliefs and your values and I want to tell them your point of view and I know the way you view us as a whole isn't going to change in this one day but I just want to help maybe start a conversation start a way for us to learn about each other Above um, all, I think knowledge is valuable. Pedrak has picked up the journal from your hands, and he's holding it up uh, uh, open and vertical so that Vajra can see, and he's pointing at one of the drawings and just silently chuckling. Um, and she just glances and then sort of ignores him, and he's uh, going to be, go back to just uh, flipping through the pages. Okay, well, we are having a conversation. Right now. <laughs> I have a request, and it's the only thing I can think of that you could do to make me mm, tolerate you, your presence. But, um, I don't really care to learn about you, though I guess Grandpa does. So, um,. I'll just talk for him if he has questions for you. Um, which Thanks. he does. He begins to ask about some things that uh, uh, through Vajra, he never speaks, but he points at a journal and then she uh, voices for him a few questions about some places you have been and some creatures you've met and some of the colonies, uh, uh, mainly the closest ones. Uh, he asks... Um, a lot of this, I'm not actually going to voice it, but the ones, the, the, the questions I most seem, uh, he most seem interested about uh, is whether it's true that you have a kind of people that uh, never sleeps. Um, and so you start like telling him about, about elves and you can yeah. tell him that you're like related to one. Yeah, I'll tell him that my father is one. Um... And he has a few basic questions about magic, and uh, and as he, <laughs> um, Vajra begins to get a little flustered by this, and uh, as she voices his questions, it becomes clearer and clearer that uh, his interest in magic is related to her, uh, and she's like with with every question, it seems like she's wording them in a way that's trying to imply that that it's not about her, but it's kind of obvious that it is. Despite our efforts, is is magic rare among your people? I thought it, I thought it was very uh, prolific among the Ladarians. Magic is common. Control of magic is a little rare, and then. Well, the more powerful the magic, the more rare it becomes. Everyone has a little bit of it. Animals do, plants do, people do. Uh, well... You mean here, but not our people or animals. I don't know about yours. Do you not? Well, some of our people seem to all have magic like yours, uh, but most of them know. Wait, so do I have magic because I was born here? Is that why I can I'll talk to the animals? <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, Vajra and a, and a grandfather just exchange a, a glance. Uh, he nods, but she says, I don't know, maybe. Hmm. 
But uh, can you tell us about this song? What? We were all... What do you mean? What's what's there to say? Well, what does it mean? Nah, uh, it means you're welcome. Do your people have many songs for different occasions? Yeah, obviously. Oh, this is something that I don't think we ever knew. It would be great to learn of your different songs and what they mean to your people. <laughs> you don't have songs? We do, but <laughs> we don't know your songs. We don't know any art made by your people. And that is something that I think is a great thing for our people to know. I... A lot of... Florinans, people like me, they think that the Aitarava only know war, and that they don't know something like... something beautiful like a song. It'd be great for them to know about that. We do have war songs. <laughs> As do we. War is a very emotional thing. Come to think of it, there was just a band the other day in the tavern singing tales of our exploits. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's in the future. You're confused. <laughs> that's in the oh, future. sorry, I hallucinate back and forth <laughs> between the future and the present. <laughs> Uh, that happens once you become etern an eternal being. <laughs> Every amphibious creature is also precognitive. Uh, Grandpa says we can teach you some songs if that's what you want. And in fact, that, that mask, um, it can help you with them. You can memorize them and repeat them really easily. I'm sorry, uh, what? The mask? Oh, many sounds. It's like a recording device. In, in the uh, way that your translate. brain is. <laughs> and the stone one is too powerful to be... to be comprehended? Uh, yeah. Yep. Well... I'd, I'd like to use my magic. class feature to instantly cast Identify on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll, I'll explain what he's doing, actually. If you're interested in magic, this man here <clears throat> has a great knowledge of it, of our ma magics. Um, what is he? Well, he's... A professor! <laughs> yeah. He's a teacher. And, uh... He's a person like us, from our lands, and he knows of both of our sorts of magic, which is more than almost anyone from our land can say. Here, shake hands! <laughs> <laughs> Do what? Um... Here, I'll, I'll hold out my hand. It's a, it's a gesture of good faith. It's to show that you are unarmed. Right. <laughs> um. <laughs> uh, she, she doesn't really seem interested in doing this, but you see from the the exchange that she and Patrick have that uh, he's encouraging her. Until uh, eventually she just kind of goes for it and it's a very brief handshake. It's more like she touches your hand and then pulls back. Right. Uh, then Patrick does the same and he, he does more of a handshake. Like he's just mimicking what you're doing. So he's also roughly mimicking your strength. Sure. This one's got the hang of it. Anyways, identify. What does it do? Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> um... <laughs> Spill your secrets. <laughs> okay. 
So, um, Pontifex Tis is the mask of the Observer. Uh, it is made of, of stone and it's current, uh, normal stone, and in its current state, uh, it doesn't do anything. But once somebody with the right tools and with the right knowledge sculpts it into the exact facial features of any person that they know of, uh, whenever the attuned person wears the mask, they will see through that person's eyes. <gasps> oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> probably. <laughs> Uh, it can only be used like once it's sculpted. That's it. You will never be able right. to sculpt it for like a di after a different person. Hey. Yeah, I think the professor is like putting two and two together. This is uh... wow. Uh, thank you. I think he like goes up and like <laughs> takes one of their hands and like puts his other hand on it and starts violently shaking their hand. <laughs> this is fantastic. Wow, this is I've never it's experienced this sort of magic. This is a rock and yet it does something like this. I mean, what's <laughs> up? Oh. <laughs> I think he's gonna hug the old man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's having oh, fun. I'm not a hugger, but I will make an exception. <laughs> he's not really sure what you're doing, but he's trying to do it back to you. Hey, Alex, good. tell them this I like. You like. <laughs> we all like. <laughs> your your gifts are incredible. <laughs> The other one, eh, this one? Wow, they're both, they're both incredible. I'm really excited about the bird mask. Um, you know, I've never been able to sing, but... uh, I'm sure first... I can come up with a way to abuse the first one, but this one, it is easily <laughs> abusable. Um, <laughs> uh, following his enthusiasm, it's clear that the two of them have a brief conversation, and then she says, Okay, Grandpa says that we can't take it back. Wait, I wasn't supposed to say that out loud. Um, <laughs> he's happy that you're happy? Very happy. Enjoy your supplies. It was garbage? <laughs> <laughs> they just find it like, uh, oh, it's a rock. Let's give it to those foreigners. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose they did, they wouldn't have any need for the bird mask. <clears throat> um, out of curiosity, do you know who made them? <clears throat> what sorts of people? Um, one was made by our people. The other we just found. Yeah. <laughs> oh. By your own tribe or another? Um, it was, and then she looks at Pedrick. Uh, it was a different one, and then we traded for it. So you do trade with others. It's oh. not a new concept. Good. <laughs> <laughs> she looks a little offended. You... <laughs> do you only <laughs> trade with other Ataraba? Say, uh, the Yavelsi. They're... We trade with people. the Yavelsi too. You know, we met one not too long ago. Mm-hmm. Pip holds up the red beak amulet. Oh, right, of course. Um... <laughs> oh. You got something really, really terrible there. <laughs> I mean, obviously our people didn't make that. Oh? Yeah, well, you can tell. How so? It, it, I mean, look at it! And then she, she like, gets uh, just a little closer to Pip. Okay, first of all, it's not made of wood. Um, generally, we just work with wood. And uh, that doesn't even look like a red beak at all. It looked like a child tried to make a red beak. Could it have been an Itaraba child? <laughs> No, Itaraba children are way better than this. 
<laughs> Pip just just sort of drops it to the ground. <laughs> Starts kicking dirt over it. <laughs> oh. Yep. <laughs> For cooperation tomorrow and on, what about a trade? Give us one of your songs. I will give you one of my stories. Uh, Grandpa says that's acceptable. Good. Do you have a place to sit as a group? Uh, um, maybe we can turn this into more of a friendly arrangement. Uh, rather than being surrounded by people with weapons, we could just gather all together and sing songs as a group around a fire, maybe. Uh, See what other strange rocks you have lying around I could perhaps look at. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Grandpa says that's fine. Um, our welcome to you lasts until sunset. So when the sun sets, you need to be gone. Okay. But, out of curiosity, uh, for any time in the future, if we wanted to do something like this again, and bring gifts, how would we, uh, how would we arrange that? Uh, sorry, can, can you repeat that? If we want to do something like this again, and ask you questions about your people, and well, and bring you gifts. How would we, uh, how would we arrange that? Well, we wouldn't. Hmm. But, ah, uh, Grandpa says... Grandpa says that the, the Red Beak Whisperer is welcome to request to visit whenever he wants. That's you. Okay, good. <laughs> no, alright. Oh, okay. But for tonight, let's just... Does Tekka have a certain story? Uh, yeah, but we don't have to take it. Do you? Oh, no, I want to hear Tekka's story. All right, yeah. Uh, <laughs> do we sit on a, a log? Like, what kind of? Uh, yeah. Okay. Have? So you're you're taking a little bit further uh, up, like in the direction that you were already going back where they were. And as the terrain slopes up a, a little bit, you basically end up on the higher, on the elevated, rocky terrain that was surrounding you, but just further up ahead, um, where it looks like they uh, they were possibly camping down um there's like some belongings but there aren't any any tents uh, set up uh, or anything of the sort uh, uh, but there are multiple little little uh, like fire pits uh, um and you're just allowed to sit around one of them i've lived on this land as you have and in the cold of night, we told stories to pass time, to forget the cold. And we were taught the power of animals, their stories, and what was unseen in the forests and the plains. 
this is one of those stories. Raven was holding their sticks, building their nest strong as bricks, when noticing squirrel in a hurry, acorns falling away in a flurry. Squirrel hurried down their tree, getting their food before they free, when Raven saw acorns below their nest. They flew down to clean up their mess. Raven brought them back to Squirrel. In turn, Squirrel left their tail curled with a promise to return the favor. Raven turned head at the odd behavior. When Raven took a walk the very next day, Cuckoo entered the nest while they were away, leapt across branches. Squirrel swung their tail. Cuckoo ran away with a groan and a wail. So when Raven returned, they did find a feather. So realized to whom it used to be tethered. Raven looked to their neighbor and waved their wings. For kindness was woven in their tree's ring. That was the story told by the fire. That was beautiful, Tifa. Oh! Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh no, we're being attacked by the by the wyvern. No. <laughs> Bad time. Oh. That was that was really good. Oh. <laughs> You just had that in the wings this whole time, Sid? <laughs> Did you like that, yeah, Sid? Yeah. It was really good. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. He got arrested. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, German authorities. Oh, the timing. <laughs> it's such a beautiful tale of friendship. Inspiring. <laughs> is is no one else interested in this bird mask? <laughs> <laughs> Pip can't use it. I will take it if no one will. As a sign of respect. Is that the is that the memorization one? I mean, uh, well, yeah. Let's see. Mimic sounds. As by oh, the okay, Mimicry okay. feature of uh, um, that Kenku have, nice. it's the same rules. <clears throat> right. So, so you can only mimic the things that you've heard before, or mm -hmm. that have been said near the mask that you have heard before. <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah, I mean, Talix, what Talix would like it too, if. But if Tekka wants it, he'll, he'll let Tekka have it for sure. Imagine how, imagine how it would like affect Tekka's storytelling. <laughs> Just adding sound effects. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, punctuated with the, with the Raven sounds. That'd be so cool. <laughs> Good point. Okay, yes, Tekka should have it. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm back, by the way. <laughs> Welcome back. back. I love and, that uh, game crush so right after. Does anyone else, do any of the others join us in this circle that Talix wants to have happen? Like other <laughs> Itaro? Circle? Circle? Yeah. yeah, there's others. There's about maybe a yeah. couple dozen people. Um, most of them kind of a, a, a small distance away. There's a few that are very close, uh, even sitting in between uh, some of you. Um, it seems that, you know, they all have various degrees of interest in what you have to say and in sharing their own tales. Yeah. Uh, there's a few of them who do offer to sing. Um, and they'll they'll even repeat songs multiple times if you'd like to, like, learn them. Uh, and they'll just guide you through them. Um, awesome. But the way they sing, it's... Um... 
it's difficult to memorize and it is difficult to repeat. Uh, they are very good at, at doing these vocalizations that um, the only one who would have any experience with would be Pip um, when he mimics the, the, the calls of various birds. Um, so the, the rest of you can do your best approximation of it. Um, it's not very good. Some of the Atara are very encouraging, though. Others kind of laugh at your attempts. Uh, uh, simultaneously, Talix would probably try to get in some questions about, like, I don't know, general things. Uh, what's if you can see any of their uh, their crafts since that was mentioned? Um, mm -hmm. um, uh, the first thing you'd see is that they have their own kind of paper uh, that looks different from your kind of parchment, and it's kind of it's it's almost shiny. Um, and there, some of them, uh, Patriarch being one of them, has, uh, has some out and are like taking notes as like during during Tekka's story and just doing various questions and answers. Hmm. Things like, uh, you know, any anything about the history of their tribe or if they have any legends or religion uh, that they could share, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Uh, the main takeaways you'd get from this, I suppose, uh, just roll a persuasion check in general, and I'll decide, like, how much uh, you get. Team? Okay. So, um, off note would be uh, the fact that they... Um, they have their own uh, uh, their own pantheon, uh, which you you've already like familiar familiarized yourself with. They worship the Lady of the Land. Um, oh God, hold on! I didn't have this, these notes. Imperial That's Imperial. My uh, yes, and uh, they worship a Meodopite. I heard that one before. I don't know if you have. <laughs> who dat? <clears throat> yeah, I would. No phone. Who this? I would ask about it. Um, if, they, if I can get whatever, mm -hmm. whatever they'd be willing to tell. You know? Yeah. So uh, Vajra basically um, tells you what Pedrick tells her. Um, which is a little tale of a Meodopite. Um, and she says, Okay, so a long time ago, this is really basic stuff. A long time ago, they challenged the Meodopite and forced them to give up whatever he valued most. So, uh, when they asked what he loved above all else, uh, Meodopite, in, in truth, replied, My humanity. And uh, uh, thus, Meodopite permanently lost his body, and uh, that's how he came to become the sun. However, what he truly meant with the word humanity was really humankind. And so this way, he protected the rest of us from them. From Muriel and Curiel? No, 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 from them. Oh. And um, to uh, to Talix, who's like actually talking to them, and then um, <laughs> the rest of the party actually gets this little um, th th gets it as a footnote uh, in Orm's pages as he's translating the conversation for you uh, that she is using what is called a divine pronoun, which is unique to Ladarian languages, and Tech are you familiar with it as it exists in Azenfair too, uh, which is a pronoun that carries. Um, no particular gender, but it's not just gender neutral. Uh, all deities are considered to be beyond uh, the the human concept of gender. Uh, that includes dragons, that includes even the lady. Um, this doesn't really translate into Polonian languages, but it's something that's unique to Ladarian ones. Uh, so whenever Vajra says them, 
uh, she means a singular entity, but she's not really giving that entity a name or a gender. But Talix has heard some reference to like an unbespoken divine entity that is usually antagonistic, right? Yeah, Talix has come across like references in his studies, in his research, in his okay. archaeologist work. Cool. I don't know if anyone else. That's pretty much all Talix is doing. Aside from just enjoying the, uh, the songs and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And that's why, uh, that's how Myotopite came to be known as the first martyr. As he gave himself up to save the world. Talix will definitely write that down. Uh, then when asking about ancient history of the Atara, um, they begin to tell you of how they used to uh, live in the entirety of uh, of the continent, uh, um, which they call. I, I I lost my point. They they call it uh, Ladath. That's their word uh, for the continent. Um, how do you spell that? Oh, perfect. close. No. <clears throat> Oh god, I keep losing the spot in my notes. There we go. Boop. No. And when they refer to themselves, the word you have is Ladarians, but they call themselves Ladathe. And so she, um, she decided to look a little tired of having to do this, but uh, um, it seems like her grandfather is just, uh, you know, encouraging her and pushing her to, to, um, put into words whatever he's thinking. So she starts to tell you how they used to live <clears throat> all over Ladath, but then uh, they were chased out and banished to the peninsula. Uh, and then in the peninsula, they end up splitting into four different groups, and that's how they currently live today. Um, and then she short... Hmm? Mm, I was just gonna ask if, like, can people use the river now, or do people cannot? Can people not use the river? Well, I say that people can't because it's ours. <laughs> Grandpa says that he has an idea. Oh, uh, he wants me to tell the idea. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, uh, okay, fine, 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 fine. So, um, we used to have a place where we would live. Uh, and it was nice because it was tall and it had tall trees and it was really good for us because we took up the, uh, the sky part of the peninsula. Up to where the dragons let us stay, of course. Um, and we can no longer go there. And he says that it would be nice if we could go back there and like if you could if you could do this for us then we'd, we'd we'd tolerate you. I'm sorry. Uh so we need to do what with the tree? Um the the, the trees are not an issue. The issue is that uh, this place which we call Sentinel's Watch uh is no longer safe for us or for anyone. What it happened to be some ways to the west. Yeah. Because of uh, metal animals. And she begins to like lean forward a little bit, and a lot of people stop talking at this point, and they they turn their heads, um, and they just pay attention. And she has almost like a glint in her eyes as she says, "Did you see it?" We've heard stories. Yeah, I figured, because if you'd seen it, you'd be dead. Are you sure? Because I have some of my people going after that thing right now. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. And I hope you said your goodbyes to those people, because they're not gonna come back. Wait, oh. so your people have encountered it too. Can you tell us anything more about it? We don't know <laughs> oh, you their want me number, to tell their you strength. About it? 
Yeah, I can tell well, you about it. If we're going to go after them, the more uh, knowledge we have, the better. She is leaning forward a little bit further as uh, uh, she as she says, its hunting ground is dozens, if not hundreds of square miles, and all manner of creatures that enter hardly ever return. Or if they do, they are quickly eviscerated by an unseen barrage of arrows covered in fire. Every creature dies, from the smallest of birds, trapped in sticky tape in small, in small traps, to the most gargantuan of monstrosities, drawn and quartered and left in pits full of sharpened spikes. Uh, how this thing flies? Oh, like... thank the gods, no. Imagine if it could hey. fly. Wait, is that everyone dies? Everyone died? Mm-hmm. Yeah. How... How... How do you know about the thing, then, if everyone died? <laughs> when... Oh, hold on. Uh, Shut up, is. that's how. <laughs> <laughs> even those who survived it, even those who made it, those who returned to their homes, believing themselves to be safe and sharing the story with the rest of us uh, would be found dead days later. A bloody mess in their beds and a look of terror across their faces. What is it? What is it? We call it the one yeah. who stares. Okay, but what is it? Uh, I've been called dead before. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, can I inside check, or would I have to inside yeah. check Talix and translation? Inside check her as she's telling the story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah um, you can roll an inside check on her, um, and mm -hmm. you're basing this off on like her body language and her tone more than anything. Um, you don't think that Alex is embellishing what she's saying, so apparently she's just like putting a lot of unnecessary details into this. Um, hmm. With a seven, you think she might be trying to scare you? Ah, uh, oh. And uh, when when Pippa asks, "Well, what is it?" she says, "Well, it's an abomination left here by the gods to punish outsiders." And then another. Itarva speaks up and says, No, 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 the gods have nothing to do with it. It is the jungle come alive, cursed to defend itself against those who would exploit it. And then there's a, a different Itaro who says, No, 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 it is a fiend, born in the abyss in the lowest point of the world, so vile that even the sea didn't want it and spat it out. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, uh, Vajra says, One thing is known for certain. The few survivors of its onslaught always describe two beads of red light in the canopy before heads would start rolling. Traps springing from the underbrush, the underbrush and men flying into the air and immediately gutted. So there are traps. Mm -hmm. It's not just this creature, it's something intelligent. Am I the only one thinking of our... Uh... Canine friend whose wife we murdered. Uh, I was thinking more Tenhart. I wouldn't be surprised at this point if they work together. <laughs> <laughs> All the villains in this campaign. <laughs> it it actually kind of makes me think of hawk bears. <sighs> Well, whatever it's making you think of, it is unlike anything you've ever met before. And, ah, uh, Grandpa says that he thinks that maybe outsiders can eh, take it down. Yeah, we're already on it. <laughs> right, yeah. yeah, you are. When okay. you really are? Yeah. What, like your friends? Well... Like I said, they don't stand a chance. Okay, well, what Grandpa says he thinks it. They... Mm. <laughs> Grandpa <laughs> says that he thinks that maybe there is something you could do. He says you're different. 
Okay. We'll see what we can do. And after we do this, uh, how do I get a hold of you? Do you have a world point card? <laughs> <laughs> do we have a what? Hmm, yeah, probably not. I guess I'll have to come back and tell you about it. I could send an animal to come visit, oh. but only if you're within 50 miles. <laughs> <laughs> huh. How far are we? <laughs> well, we use, we use a red beak to talk to one another, but we generally don't stray too far from each other. And we're always on the move, so, you know, you come back here in a few days and we'll be gone. Hmm. If you were to take care of it, we would know. We would find out in no time. Okay. If, if Sentinel's watch were to be safe again, we would hear about it. Well, in that case, just... Just wait for the news. Uh, I have faith in this group. It, it, the people surrounding you, most of them, um, from their either perplexed looks or maybe even like the occasional chuckle, it seems that most of these people don't really think that this is something that's that's feasible. Um, the <clears throat> the smile on Pedro's face seems genuine. There's a few people who look at you with this sense of uh, like obvious expressions of awe. Um, the ones closest to you, Talix, they even wish you good luck. Awe oh, as in they're sad that they will never see us again, or that they're impressed that we will take it on? Um, uh, impressed? That That's something that you would uh, offer to do. Hmm. I mean, looking to the to my companions, I'm pretty sure this has to do with horn, right? Metal traps, mm -hmm. constructions, fiery eyes, fire, eyes, fire some arrows, machinations. I think, I think this aligns with our other goals. Possible. And if it and does, a good... and the good thing is that it's. Well, on the list of the phantoms anyway, so we will definitely have people fighting with us. Right, and we help your friends, Brooke, and we help these people, and in turn, maybe help... <laughs> Simlilon. And, uh, and the Genasi, just making their trip along the river, if it makes that safer. This is... this is a hero's quest! Sure. Professor, why are you always so... <laughs> <laughs> we are not here to be heroes. What else would we be here to be? We're here just to do what needs to be done. Oh, well, same thing. <laughs> I think the professor is actually right there. I think we're both right. Right, well, uh, before we break up this whole kumbaya circle thing, I do uh, have a question for our new friends. Uh, you all spoke uh, that before you were chased out and banished to this peninsula, uh, that you had uh, free reign over uh, whatever you called it, Ledath. It, uh, does this look familiar to you? And if so, could you explain? Uh, and he's gonna like, uh, like run his hand to the ground and pick up like a, a bits of dirt and sand or whatever. Um, and I'm gonna use Prestidigitation to create a non-magical trinket in my hand uh, of the castle. The castle thingy that we had a dope sculpture of that we gave to the witch. Based on how everyone um, looks at it, uh, eyes widening, whispers uh, beginning to, to um, you, you're hearing whispers and uh, people uh, looking at each other. Uh, it seems like everyone knows exactly what it is, 
um, just their their instant, instinctive reaction immediately gave it away. Um, and this is the first time that Pedrek looks uh, um, somewhat serious. Uh, this whole time he seemed to have been thoroughly enjoying you being here, and he's been, uh, even as though he has never said a word, he has been engaging through his granddaughter in all sorts of conversations. <clears throat> but uh, at this point, yeah, his expression becomes a little bit more stern. And uh, Vladra at first stammers a little bit, and then she says, Ah, uh, yeah, right. Uh, what do you know about it? We know it is a place of uh, importance, and... Uh, well, that we may perhaps have to go there eventually. And we have somewhat of a standing invitation, if oh, I remember no. correctly. Oh, no, 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 you should not go there. That is not a place for outsiders. Why? Because it is not. It's, it's, it's not. It is not a convincing reason. There's yeah. got to be a reason. Who is, who was is it for? Uh, Grandpa? And then the two of them stay silent for a long time, clearly having just a bit of a back and forth between them, um, until she she just shakes her head and says, ah, "It's it's for people who want to die." Oh. And Wait, so uh... you should only go there when you no longer want to live. That's the only exception to our exile. That's the only time where we can leave the peninsula if we want to go there. Uh, that's not good. Am I misremembering, friends, or do we not have a standing invitation to this place? Our, well, um... Wait, oh crap, I forgot her name. It wasn't much of an invitation when she Raquel said, told no. us about it. Yeah, Raquel. Yeah, she told us she was going there. Oh. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I, she definitely said she was going there. I don't know if she said that we should come. Wait, we wait, does that mean? Direction. She is going there to die. No, no, she can't. I might be able to reverse her. The curse. How long does it take someone to get there? Uh, it's a long journey. I don't know, Grandpa? Not sure. We were told it is just on the border of the peninsula and the, the mainland. If we were to follow the southern coast, we would reach it. I don't it's see why they would the tell us this line. information if they did not want us to go. Look, you're only supposed to go there when you no longer want to live. No, you are only supposed to go there when you wish to die. Not us. Well... We were not banished. Okay. Well... Whatever! Wait, any legends saying exactly who banished you and why? Um... She <coughs> turns towards her grandfather, who goes through his notes. <laughs> <laughs> and she says, uh, it was the Nahadra. There was a there was a fight, there was a war, and it took a while, and you know, yada yada, suffering, whatever. We lost. What did you fight for? I don't know, Grandpa. <laughs> Okay, well, they were doing things to the land that were bad, and uh, a lot of people disagreed with it, but also it made them a lot stronger. And uh, ultimately, they, they're the ones who won. 
So uh, Derry King said, uh, we will allow you to keep on living, but you gotta go to this piece of land that we don't care about because it doesn't have the metals and the stuff that we want. Oh. Wait, repeat that last bit and slowly and make sure you translate this is correctly, Talix. <laughs> Ah, uh, they didn't care about the peninsula? And why? Because it didn't have the resources that they wanted. What kinds of resources? Uh, <laughs> uh, Say the word. <laughs> he, uh, he's saying metals and stones. Like... Crystals? Can you show them the... One of you has a piece of crystal from... From the wolf, right? Uh, yes, I have uh, quite a bit. I wasn't sure if you meant the rubies from the wolf thing. Uh, yeah, I have... Uh, I had 50 gold of ruby teeth and claws, and then I gave one of the teeth or claws to... The witch. Uh, to Rakella, yeah, yeah. But he still got the rest of it. No, the other so. witch. Oh, the, the river witch, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, know. So I don't know how much value this is left, but I imagine he still has a decent amount of these things. So you're getting one of the rubies out? I guess so. That's what Alex is asking for. I guess. Uh, that sort of crystal? That sort of uh, stone? Um... What? That? No, that's from... Uh, have you met a Krelko? A Krelko? A what? Uh, that's the people that have those. Or are they like shapeshifters of sorts? They're... What does that mean? Uh, do like... they change their shape into a wolf? No. No, they just... They have they're these, and she's like tapping at the tip of her index on the on the box that she has on her chin. And made of like sparkly stuff, like that. But they're otherwise people like you. Well, uh, yeah, like us, like the Yezen, like the Yavelsi. Oh. There's so many notes I must take. <laughs> oh, hold on, we are diverging from something important here. Would you know if you saw uh, d this metal or these stones they they saw? Would you recognize one? I think there's a bit of a, of a misunderstanding. We've been on the peninsula for hundreds and hundreds of years. Um, we don't... This has been... This is very old history. What about I your don't grandfather? know. Grandpa Would doesn't he recognize know. it? Grandpa. He looks aged. No, no, he doesn't. Nobody knows the ways of these of these people. We barely remember their names. Okay. Uh, this leads me to another question. Uh, there are Ladarian dragons. Yes, they patrol the skies so that. We cannot fly, but others cannot fly into the mainland and such, yes? What and about they are, them? Uh, some kind of connections to gemstones, right? Mm-hmm. Well, they have gemstones, like the Krelko. Like this. Uh, and he's gonna pull out his little prism. I hear from a very reliable source that uh, this is a Lajarian gemstone dragon adjacent thing. Um, you're, you're pulling at your prism? Yeah, his, uh, my color prism light refraction thingamajig. Okay. Uh, a lot of people around you gasp, and Pedric chucks his cloak over it. Oh, that is what I was looking for. <laughs> Where are you? Oh. 
Um, Grandpa says to put that away. Uh, why? Uh, because <laughs> the Lord of the Sky might come down on us. Oh, that sounds bad. Oh, this sounds intriguing. Who is this Lord of the Sky? That, what do you mean? Who is he? The Lord of the Sky is the Lord of the Sky. A dragon. Is this a Lodorian oh, gemstone dragon? Flying. It's an a dragon. Do you not I know anything? Sense. I know of a dragon. A dragon is who told me about this. I just spoke with <laughs> one at length. You speak with dragons? Obviously, and he'll start babbling off in Jotonic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in, our, in our world, dragons are a little different, but they they live with us. Um, some There's one Itarava uh, in the group who speaks up and says, I told you I saw a dragon in one of their cities. That's true. Yes, that's the dragon we spoke to. They don't He's a eat close you? friend of mine. No. Do, do they not? Well, they don't eat you? A long time ago, things were a little... Uh, not anymore. No. <laughs> not anymore. <laughs> Only if you deserve it. But uh, anyways, I'm immensely intrigued. Uh, Tell me more about this rock. It is uh, important to me. That looks like... Um, and she's so very slowly warning to us as she's just listening to, to uh, whatever grandfather is uh, uh, telling you. Uh, a scale that looks like a scale of the Lord of the Sky. And uh, what is the problem with having this? Nobody can have them. Um, and they are supposed to not be taken by people. Ah, well, there you go. There is a factual inaccuracy as I currently have one. And have had it for hundreds of years. Mm, yeah, and no, I don't believe you. <laughs> if you really did, the Lord of the Sky would have found you. For some reason, he found it in our world. Uh, not entirely. I was given it in our world. Long before any of our people were here, as far as we understand. As I said, hundreds of years ago. <laughs> yeah, well, we don't believe you. Then she glances, glances at her grandfather in size and says, oh, I don't believe you. So you don't think it is real? I think you found this here. Maybe a few days ago. And as soon as the Lord of the Sky smells it, you're gonna be in big trouble. Well, I hope to meet this Lord of the Sky one day. I have many questions for him. <laughs> you're this <laughs> suicidal. Sure. You might as well just go to the castle. Oh, perfect. That's not an invitation! <laughs> <laughs> Alex, you're translating this poorly. She's making no sense. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> or mistranslating oh, this, sun's getting kind of low. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I thought about a lady, you should smile more. Oh, no. <laughs> You're too hostile. Coming from me. Does Talix translate this? No. <laughs> <laughs> but we are um, starting to... Y you are running out of time. Uh, so... Time to send you off. Alright. Thank you for this... <clears throat> For this wonderful meeting, this chance to know each other, all that you've shared. Right. 
I wish you good fortune, and uh, I apologize for the circumstances of our last meeting. Mm -hmm. but... Uh, let me uh, accompany you. Okay, where? She and her grandfather exchange a look. Oh, uh, just further down, where where we met. Okay. And then, um, as some people begin to stand up, uh, Vajra just gestures that gestures at them, and they sit back down. Uh, and she's the only one that actually comes with you. Uh, so you just proceed a little bit downhill as uh, uh, the light uh, of the sun is beginning to dwindle. And uh, by the time uh, um, you're, you're a large distance away from everyone else and you're kind of back in that, uh, um, in that area where you're flanked by them on both sides and ahead of you, um, she just leans in a little bit closer to you, Talix, and says, Look, you might have won over the hearts of some of my people, but I am never going to forgive you. Well, that's the way of things sometimes. You're allowed to be angry. That's natural. Ugh, you oh. sound just like my grandpa. <laughs> Thank her for the compliment. Um, he seems to be a wise man. You know what he is? He's old. And as soon as he is gone, I'll be taking over the leadership of our group. And things are going to change when I am in charge. I hope you can understand that Violence doesn't always give you the, the best outcome, you know? Um, there's value in friendship and in trying to move past pain and work towards something better for everyone. Vengeance isn't very productive. Roll a persuasion check. Okay. You can do it. Well, given my roles so far today, I don't you know. You can do it. Angel is going to yep. balance out. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> that's that's my highest roll so far, I think. Sorry, oh, I, oh. I, I, I zoomed out to see you your want roll, to re -roll that? and I saw the horse again. <clears throat> yeah. Jason, do you want to re-roll that? Are you sure you don't want it? I mean, I might you need just it in the future, that. but I have gotten so many, so. I mean, I have an imminent one. Imminent. Imminent inspiration. Oh, but you, this, I'm not your best friend. Why am I getting the inspiration? <laughs> Here, take the badonkey donkey. Give me the best friend one. <laughs> sure. Yes. Uh, I don't know if the badonkey donk will fit in the tower, though. It's quite huge. <laughs> It does not. <laughs> oh, yes, it oh. Does. Just barely. Oh, oh no! no! Oh, no! <laughs> so <laughs> close! It failed me. It wasn't big enough. Was <laughs> Blame the DM. She messed up with the weight. You asked me <laughs> to! So 13 is my best rule. Uh, I can't believe you traded badonkadonks for friendship. <laughs> well, I mean, it is established. It's not just is some not friendship. Best friend. It's best friendship. <laughs> <laughs> um, Vajra has to look up uh, in order to maintain eye contact with uh, uh, pretty much any of you except Pip. Um, and as she does, you can see that uh, um, this girl is very much not over what happened a few days ago and uh, uh, she says 
You better hope that Grandpa lives for a long while still. And she spits at your feet and begins to walk away. You know, I kind of like her. <laughs> in the meantime, I hope that time teaches her happier lessons. Okay. Well, pretty obvious that she hasn't participated in her last war. Otherwise, she wouldn't look for another one. She lost her companion, remember? Well, so did we. What? In the past. They no. have killed people. Well, okay, but... Yes. But it's personal for <clears> her. <throat> And she's young. And it was two days ago. Yeah, and this is very well. It was, no, it a was week, week ago. But still. Yeah. Really? Yeah. <laughs> you you slept a long time. <laughs> yeah, the the, the the tree thing messed me up a bit too. <laughs> uh, at least you all had a dream to remember. <laughs> Would I any just... of that have counted as a short rest? <laughs> Yeah, we sat by a fire for several hours. That should be a short rest, right? Yeah. And do I get one with a snake in my shoulder? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, that's what but I But I mean. get one. Nice. Yeah, everyone else gets a short rest. Wait, he doesn't get a short rest? Uh, no. I am currently being bitten. <laughs> Is he taking more damage? Um, well, I was going to roll that after the break, but I can roll for that to you now, yeah. Can I please notice that he's dying? <laughs> 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 well, let me roll. Oh, let me show you. You don't the look so Elfars. good. I, I've been trying to hint at it. Uh, and let me also clear this. Uh, all right. So Pip, uh -huh. um, the, over the course of this entire uh, talk, uh, <laughs> um. Nom, You've nom, just nom, been nom, feeling nom. the strength. <laughs> You've been feeling just the strength to slowly leave your body. <laughs> Is that a harmonica? <laughs> Jesus, we're hearing it's music from you. Try some a panic attack harmonica. <laughs> <laughs> panic attack harmonica. <laughs> did I share the meme with you guys? Oh, I yeah, think I did. That's... Okay. Um. Ultimately, that's going to be 11 points uh, of uh, poison damage. <laughs> I think oh, no. Talix will, will notice. But you drop unconscious? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's where we're going to take a break. I'm just the sleepiest boy. <laughs> sad about him. What has this woman done to him? <laughs> Let him oh, sleep. Why are you so eager to wake him up? He's a growing boy. He needs sleep. <laughs> it's fine. It is fine. Ignore it. It's fine. <laughs> all right. I'll see you all in 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. I'm going to go grab my panic. Okay. <laughs> that, was, uh, that was productive. Yeah, we yeah, learned a lot from that. Oh, yeah. And now Pip is dead. Well, it's a good thing my backup character is an Aatara Va. It's a nice <laughs> transition. I thought it was a gnome. Your backup character is the one who stares. <laughs> Just join the my party. My current character is the one who stares. By the way, I will never forgive you. Also, I'm joining your party. <laughs> 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 So that I can remind yeah. you how I'm never going to forgive you. It's the... And that always happens in RPGs. You have, like, a rival who eventually begrudgingly joins you. Like, mm -hmm. Magus from Chrono Trigger. I think that's, like, the first I example. Mean, that's, that's, like, a... It's a... Not just RPGs. It's, like... It's a common story. trope. <laughs> yeah, like, a every sketcher? adventure story. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well... Sort of. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, as you're walking away and you're like about to start getting back on your horses, and so Talix, you're approaching Pip to help him up on his horse. And Pip Mr. just. Talix, I don't feel so good. 
<laughs> oh god. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, and you are you like entirely out of hit points? Yeah. <laughs> okay, then yeah, then he just passes out in your arms. Nah. The squeak falls to the ground. <clears throat> what? Squeak, what's going on? Uh. <laughs> well, the kid played with fire. But I see no burns. I. Okay, first thing, cast cure wounds. Okay, roll for it. Um. Nope, not that many. <laughs> that is a satisfying noise. The little doorbell chimes every time you hear someone. Mm. Nine. Mm. Okay. Pip, you regain nine hit points. <coughs> and so yeah, Talix is going to try to figure out what's going on with him. Uh, um, but before we do that, uh, uh Pip. Uh, there was a oh. brief moment where uh, oh. everything just went dark and you felt cold. Um, but then you felt uh, a, a pleasant warmth, one that you've, you've missed for, for a long time. Um, you've still missed dearly, but right now it's with you. And as you like blink and try to understand what's going on and where you are, you, you are in a bed and you are being tucked in and uh, it's this sense of having a family, of having someone watching over you. That's something that you've uh, missed for such a long time. And as you look to your right, uh, uh, you see someone who at first you don't recognize but after a few seconds uh, this is your granny but she is different she is young she is beautiful she is uh, um an etara may um in in her prime uh, in the prime of her life um and as she uh, gently um she just texts you in bed she chuckles a little bit and then she says by moon or by sun, I shall be found. Yet I am undone if there's no light around. And she just looks at you and waits. Oh. Uh, what? <laughs> this isn't a difficult one. Just think about it. I... By moon or I... by sun... Okay, so, so in in either day or night. Yet I am undone if there's no light around. Um. And as you're thinking about it, you feel yanked out of the bed. Uh, for a moment, you're, you're losing your... Um, you're not really sure what happened if uh, perhaps your granny just pulled you out of bed or if the bed itself just collapsed beneath you. Um, but then you are in Talix's arms. Uh, and you regain the hit points. The, uh, what was it? Nine? Yeah. Talix? Pip, what have you done? Where's... Um... You're here. Everyone's here. Ow! Ow! It hasn't been long. Ow! Get it off me! Get it off me! Do I see it? Um... Pip is probably clutching his shoulder, um, yeah, I'll, and you can I'll just yeah you can just pull yeah you remove his scarf and you can see that the the noose uh, there is a noose around his neck. I think remind me. I think only Brooke has seen it, right? Uh, uh, didn't everyone see everyone the dream? Saw oh, it? Everyone saw it. I think the dream. Yeah. 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 After the dream. <laughs> oh, that's right. The dream. Yeah. Yeah. It's become... Yeah. After the dream. Yeah. 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 
uh, sort of noose that is uh, uh, all that is always around the pip's neck and is normally hidden by the scarf. Uh, right now, it it's normal except at one end where it ends in the head of a snake, which is currently latched onto his shoulder. And the skin has turned this pale purplish color in that entire area. I can uh... get it off. There's not much I can do. Uh, I can use lesser restoration to end the poison. And Talix will do that. Uh, so yeah, he's, he's got his amber out and he's holding it over and he's praying to Valkanoth. Please, Valkanoth, just bear this child. He's been trapped in this situation. He needs a way out. He just needs some help. But it's not going to... I don't think I can do anything to make it. Mm -hmm. um, following Talix's uh, prayer, uh, the skin around the shoulder is regaining color. And Pip, you do feel a little bit better. But the snake is still latched onto your shoulder. Alright. Uh, how about this? Talix will take out a knife and try to like wedge it under the snake's head between between the head of the snake and Pip and try to pry up. Mm. Brooke, I might need your help for this. <laughs> sure, sure. Okay, so the two of you are working together to sort of like just pull out, uh, pull the snake away from the shoulder. And you're using dagger as sort of like leverage um, mm. to just pull pull it up from the, from the directly yeah. from the head, uh, from the mouth. You know, like at the best angle I can, where yeah. it's not going to like tear the skin anymore. Or... Okay. Uh, and tell you what, with, uh, with the help of Brooke, uh, the two of you can just uh, do it. Uh, um, you're strong enough to. <clears throat> uh, you're strong enough to just uh, pull the snake uh, um, away from Pip's shoulder, and when you do, uh, as the snake hisses, uh, it begins to turn back into a normal end of rope. It is a new one. Uh, the I'm professor sorry. while they're like treating him he's gonna kneel down and i'm gonna uh, i'm gonna use a spell slot to cast identify um on the noose which takes um a minute <laughs> uh, this this pip and squeak let him <laughs> cast the spell on the noose right now <laughs> well, it's obvious what Spell is doing. He like pulls out the pearl and the owl feather. Get the boovin feather. <laughs> the boovin feather. <clears throat> I tried to. I tried to undo the curse. Since I you thought... tried to do something without understanding it first. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to. I didn't want to tell you. Whenever you went out earlier, were you getting your the coins that you needed, the duck coins? Not yet. We should we hurry up and do it? I I have to tonight. I have to. You need my help. No, 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 no. If you don't have to suffer alone. No, no. No, it's not good. It's it's not duck coins, it's not Ow. <laughs> I have to hurt someone. I 
Explain. <laughs> these, these in my bag, I... He, uh, nudges his head and the, the two daggers float out of his bag. <laughs> I have to wet them with blood. <laughs> and I need to steal a coin. It's the only way. And did you not just ask us? Do you have to do it? The blood has to be in enemies. And the coin has to be stolen. And what does it have to do to make something your enemy? Mm. <laughs> On to facts. Hmm? The rope is clearly magical. It just turned into <laughs> a snake. Yeah. But He's your spell finds nothing. Uh, almost as if it wasn't magical at all. Uh, you know sufficiently. Uh, you, you are you're an expert. <laughs> yeah, you, you know enough about magic uh, to know that it is exceptionally rare for your spell to not find what exactly an item can do when there is mm -hmm. anything of magical nature upon it. But you do know that uh, uh, curses are one such thing. Most of the time they evade uh, um, identification, at least the simplest uh, kind. Uh, perhaps with mm -hmm. given more time, perhaps a pearl of higher value, a bigger one, um, and sufficient study, perhaps you could find out more. But right now all you know is that there is at least a curse upon it and that it's resisting it's actively resisting you um learning about it uh, can i discern is this an object or is this like a sentient thing it is an object okay you'll okay. be able to to uh, figure out that much <laughs> <laughs> This requires further study. Well, I'm I don't have time. I don't have I'm time. I'm definitely an enemy of your granny. I do want to get some blood for you, not for her. I don't. I don't want to have to hurt you. I. But it keeps getting tighter and tighter. If you understand, Brooke literally slits his arms, like, for a hobby. <laughs> <clears throat> so that's why I was asking, do you have to do it, Pip? <laughs> no. Do I count as an enemy of your grandma? Because she's clearly pissing me off. <laughs> I don't know. Well, how many knives are there? I, I only have two made of iron. <laughs> this is, this is what Granny needs. <laughs> Granny. Does it have to be from two different people? No. When she sent me out, she. She sent me with a list. She said, I need one coin thieved by a wicked knave, pauper victim left to crave, two faux blades from iron rot, wet with blood from last they fought. And I already have the last one. Three nut seeds of tree long stood, found within a sacred wood. Right, well, let us, uh, we can digest that in a moment. For now, we need the blood of an enemy. Hey, uh, 
This is going to... Uh, Vadred, it's time to earn your keep. And he's going to try to grab her arm. What? What? <gasps> Are you serious? <laughs> Want the blood of the last we fought? I seem to recall fighting her, and she has not forgiven us. No, no, no! no. Like I thought isn't she already gone? gone? She's gone. She's gone. Oh, my God! Sneak up on it. Oh my God! I've come for blood. <laughs> We've gotten a deep insight into the professor's <laughs> mind in this moment. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry, I have hallucinations of the Sorry. future. <laughs> I, a week ago, I, I missed during the fight we had with, with the Ataravai. I could have gotten, I could have gotten their blades, but I, I didn't. I, but I did get some of her blood. He he nudges his head again, and the vial of of uh, uh, Vadra's blood comes out, and it's just like coagulated and dry by now. I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Okay, great minds think alike. <laughs> what? Sadistic fucks think alike. What? <laughs> <laughs> so you already have the blood, correct? There's any way to make it uh, but... fluid again? Ugh. But I don't. I mean, I don't know if it would work. I don't know if it's what Granny needs. It wasn't the daggers that drew the blood. <sighs> if I trick her with a loophole, she'll just punish me more. All right. So what, we need to go pick a fight? <laughs> well, technically we have someone we fought. We could always go and uh, take a few donations from Saskarin. I'm assuming that is what you mean. I do. I almost feel better about doing it in a proper fight. Oh, if it's a fight you need, I'm sure I can go and kick the hornet's nest and start some shit at this camp. <laughs> oh, this is all very... For people, of course, not for me. <laughs> All right. How about once we're back in Sim Leon, you take care of the coin. I can. I get the daggers. And I get the blood. <laughs> okay. Yep. If one of us fought you, would that work? Mm, maybe. Squeak, can't you go ask her? <laughs> um, I don't know. This sort of back and forth travel like that, that's not typically up to me. She's the one who'd have to summon me there. For a powerful witch, she made this quite um, <laughs> complicated. Look. She gave me this bag so that whenever we get what we need, we can put it in. She'll have it. So can you not just enter the bag? Uh, I'm not going in there. Are you kidding me? Why not? What? Why not? <laughs> That's like it's an interdimensional portal. I can yeah, get ripped some apart. Some understanding of how um. peep spell works after doing it myself. It is not so different from you going <laughs> to the beach. Um, Squeak knows that that's where the ingredients go, so unless he wants to be cooked, <laughs> or... <laughs> okay, you have resistance to fire damage, yeah. <laughs> It'll take twice as long to boil. <laughs> okay. I was, I was just gonna get these things when we got back simply a lot none of you had to know I <laughs> Brooke yes Talix is gonna hand you one of the knives 
He'll hold the other one. What do you want to do with the one? Oh, having a good old fashioned knife off? Think you can think you can draw blood for me? But you're not an enemy. We will be, if we do. But not of Pip, I don't Two faux blades. Right? Well We don't I don't want to involve him in anything. He doesn't have to be. We're both ready for this. We can fight. And Doesn't we can work? just fix you up after. Okay, gentlemen, I want a good, clean fight. No <laughs> low blow, no underhanded strike. Only from the waist up, avoid the face. All right. Pip, I don't think you want to see that, right? Mm -hmm. Can someone take him away? <laughs> Just here. Uh, I've got a nice book you can read. <laughs> got adventure <laughs> and... Uh... two friends are trying <laughs> each other with knives. Yeah. <laughs> got adventure <laughs> and, uh, and pirates and <laughs> treasures and... Tell it to bring a tear to my eyes. Exotic Making lands. a book could distract from a knife fight. That would only work on me. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's got a lot of lovable characters. And uh, it's got a nice found family dynamic. You don't have to do this. We'll be okay. Tell us to just smile. It's been a while since uh, I've had this kind of fun. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna. Might have to awaken something from a. From a long time back. Okay. Let's go. <clears throat> Referee? <laughs> oh, eh. okay. So it's it's going to be Talix and Brooke. Is that right? I yeah. guess. Um, I'll just uh, engage in combat to the first cut. Okay. Each. Um, roll initiative just to see who gets like in the first attack, and then we're just gonna do a few attack rolls. Um, a few. I don't yeah. want to kill her. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. You might not get the chance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, gentlemen. Hey, three, two, one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is sick. <laughs> and, uh, Brooke, you're kind of. I I imagine you're kind of allowing this, right? Like you're not. Oh yeah. So uh, just roll with advantage, Talix, and attack roll. And then calculate your damage as Are you sure you want to give me advantage? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, I'm sure. Brooke, yeah. Brooke, defend yourself properly or this isn't going to be a real fight. <laughs> I'm coming for blood. All right. I will I will try to defend the first attack. <clears throat> okay, okay, so it's just a straight roll. All right. I'm just going to... Yeah, let's just start with a normal roll. Um... How do I attack with the dagger again? Sorry. Uh, where's my... Where, oh god, where's the... Where's the into target. Okay, it's only... Okay, there's the number. <laughs> You're a level go. one rogue. <laughs> Is that hit? No. <laughs> All right. It just... An, like, uh, the... This whole thing is so strange, and obviously none of you want to hurt one another, and your first attack is a little hesitant, and it's been a long time since you've held a weapon like, like this. 
Um, hmm. And as you Boy. you give it a try for for Pip's sake, but you still end up just meeting the resistance of Brooke's armor. Like you don't miss. You just you make contact against the leather that is sturdy enough to just um, not allow you to cut even through that. Talix um, does just a quick slash and then like kind of just checks the blade real quick and like oh. <laughs> and then just stands ready. No blood. Brooke, uh, Brooke, Brooke is the opening. Yeah. Ooh! <laughs> <laughs> yes! 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 Nah, okay. Oh! <laughs> well, half of his itch. It's almost half. Um, Brooke, it's more about the fact that uh, that Talix basically uh, left himself open, uh, and just very easily you come, uh, your your blade comes down from above, um, in the back, uh, in in Talix's back, uh, it goes a little bit. Further in than you expected. Um, he's wait. Is Alex even wearing armor at this point? Uh, I yeah. I think I would have been wearing my chainmail under my or okay. over my shirt while we went in. And it seems like you accidentally found a spot in the chainmail that has been weakened, perhaps by a previous blow in a previous fight, and you just you just burst right through it. Uh, you have drawn blood as I you needed. Dabbed me right in the gut. <laughs> Or a Talix. <clears throat> uh, Talix isn't gonna spend any more words on it. He's just gonna, like, grit his teeth and just try to back away and roll around behind Brook and go in for another strike. You roll around me? <laughs> yeah, it's Dark Souls. <laughs> yeah. He's uh, fighting an enemy that's way bigger than him. He like stab yeah. him in the stomach and he falls to the ground with the call an ambulance and then Dark Souls rolls behind <laughs> you. Not for not me. For me. <laughs> uh, as this is happening, Pip does hide his face behind the book and he wipes the tears away and he does stop crying. Mm. And then he I'm hears smiling. just Talix yelping in pain. Um, and he Talix's atta attack roll. Brooke okay. laughing maniacally. No. Damn it. Oh wait, no, it's not. It's not plus two. It's, but it's still. Can you have enough. advantage? Not plus five. Right? Sixteen. Is Brooke allowing himself to be hit? Yeah. Roll with advantage. <laughs> That uh, okay. Yep, yeah, twenty does hit. Um, uh, Brooke, uh, go ahead and roll the damage, as you know the entirety of the damage. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, Brooke, perhaps the m you've <sighs> this is all wrong. This I mean, I should not be it. happening. Uh, just the situation that you guys are in. Obviously, neither of you wants this, and the fact that Pip needs this is itself just messed up. Um, but you are doing this. You're doing it for Pip. And as the two of you are engaged in battle, uh, Talos for a moment shows a side of him that you have yet to experience. Um, as he too finds an opening, uh, one that perhaps you have left for him, but you didn't expect him to um, pick up the speed that he did. Uh, and the blow that he delivers is a genuine one, one that manages to find uh, uh, a spot that your armor doesn't protect and also draws blood. Although, it does look like he's still held back a little bit. Only five damage. <laughs> All right. That should be enough. Stab okay. him again for good measure. 
Are you saying that to me or to him? I like to leave it ambiguous. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, go ahead and put him in the bag. A squeak holds out this little bag, uh, big enough that he could fit in it, but um, it's about like the size of your coin pouch, basically. Um, the daggers themselves look a little too big to actually fit in. You can fit them uh, through the opening, but like all the way down to the hilt with the rest of the blade still exposed. But as you let go, uh, they just disappear as if sucked into a hole uh, much deeper than the one of, of the bag itself. And the second dagger also disappears within it. Uh, you wait for a few seconds, almost expecting something to happen, but the daggers are just gone. All right, Alex, tend to your wounds, and I will start bandaging up where he <laughs> hit me. I hear Pip, you're coming close to. Oh, forgive me, Volkanov. I'm going to, and uh, Talos is going to start saying a prayer of healing. Here we can, we can pre prepare our horses. All this finishes. Mm hmm. Pip, you are left wondering if uh, if this will work. Mm -hmm. Um, Talix's prayer of healing is going to affect uh, uh, Pip as well. Yep. Heal eleven. Everyone heals eleven. Wait, me too. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's an AoE. Well, you're definitely the fiercer warrior. No surprise there. I mean, you're not a warrior at all, right? No. Right? Never fought in any war. <laughs> well, <clears throat> either way, decent hit. I'm uh, sorry you had to do that. Well, you shouldn't apologize. I just hope it works. Tekka places his backpack on the ground and points to it. There are five coins of mine in this pocket. They are mine and not to be taken. <laughs> then he walks away to tend to the horses. <laughs> he is, uh... Probably the poorest one among us, by his own choice. Don't look at me, I need it for spell components. <laughs> <laughs> it says, one coin thieved by wicked knave. If I take it, am I wicked? I guess so. Only when you need to be. And Pip walks up and sneaks a coin out of the pouch. Out of the backpack. Okay. <coughs> Just one? That's that's all that's required. <laughs> yeah. So, yes? Just one? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Just making sure you didn't want to you know, <laughs> take him off. His <laughs> whole livelihood into that <clears throat> bag. <laughs> take a few off the top. I don't know. Part of me doesn't feel like this is. I don't know if this is what Granny really needs. I think the fact that it is distressing you so much might be the point. I believe she, this would suffice. She doesn't yeah. like to be tricked. 
I mean, it's not a trick if you don't understand, right? Well, I don't think it is tricking. I think it is only tricking her if you feel that you have got the upper hand. And judging from your face, I would assume you don't like any of this. But the next line means is proper victim left to crave. It's not the same if if Tekka isn't really affected by it. It's true. Well, we still have time, right? When do you need it by? Tonight? I told her tonight. <laughs> I'll get it tonight. Just <sighs> me. Please. I won't judge you any worse for this, Pip. I appreciate what you have to go through here. And I'm sorry. At least let us know what <clears throat> what is happening and what is going on. So we can help you. Pit puts the coin back. Hmm. I'm sorry, Tekka. It wouldn't hurt you enough. Can we go? Yeah. Here, let me help you. <clears throat> um, okay. Your horse is uh, much more calm than it, than it was before. Um, I just point to see it's not that everyone has this knowledge. It's clear that the horses were spooked by the presence of a snake that the rest yeah. of you just didn't know was there. Um, and with that gone, uh, Thunderstep uh, um, is uh, perfectly fine with you getting um, on his back. And although the sun has already set and you're beginning to feel somewhat tired, uh, I know that uh, if you were to set off now, um, you'd have to travel basically through most of the night in order to get to Simulian on. Um, but it's, it's feasible if that's what you want to do. Yeah, Pip needs the coin. So there is a mm, there is a new sense of urgency uh, that none of you had uh, expected, uh, but you you need to be back in Simlion as soon as you can. And this time, you push your horses um, to be as fast uh, uh, as they can carry you. They're much less, less uh, weighed down than they were before, too. Hey, <laughs> that's true. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, fine. Lucky you. Um, the only thing that's needed uh, is that um, the horses are not comfortable going too fast in the dark, but that's not an issue for you guys. Uh, I believe Pontifex can can remedy that. Yeah. With, like, lights? Yeah. yeah. Um, Correct. Uh, the, rest, uh, the rest of you keep an eye out. Uh, um, you know that danger might uh, uh, lurk around any corner. You, uh, you keep your, uh, an eye out for any potential uh, glistening of metal in the distance, anything up in the sky, um, anything uh, metal crabs crawling up from the river, or perhaps uh, a, a wolf howl in the distance, but uh, you make it to Simlilon just fine without uh, uh, any ambushes, uh, anything getting in your way. Uh, you are thoroughly exhausted by, by now, um, and all of you will, will be pretty much ready to go straight to bed under different circumstances, but uh, Pape has one job to do before uh, before the sun rises. 
So, Pip, um, what would you like to do? <clears throat> Pip will uh, turn to the others and just say, Can I meet you guys back at the inn afterwards? Of course. Don't get caught. But be careful. It won't Here, be me know. doing the thieving. Pip will cast Disguise Self um, just to look a little taller and be dressed in like a, a long uh, black coat um, just covers uh, his body and face. Uh, when I was a little older than you, I had a well, I had a the first trick I ever learned with magic was this. So hold on to this flower petal here. If anything goes wrong and you need our help, just let it go. So you're That's saying I gotta I work with one hand? Just keep it in your fist, okay? All right. It's saved my fr a friend of mine before, so it should work. Pip nuts. And okay. uh, he's he's gonna start walking. Um, bit further into town and uh it's nighttime now and so he's he's just sort of like um going to be walking around i guess where a tavern is um peeking in seeing if there's any stragglers sort of left behind maybe alone <laughs> and uh as he's walking in that direction uh, Squeak says in Pip's mind. You, uh... You really let them do that, huh? And Pip just says, What choice do I have? <laughs> A few more days and this thing will cut off my breathing. And, uh, yeah, he's just gonna look for someone alone. I am going to ask for a perception check. Okay. <laughs> that dang horse. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's still here. <laughs> I keep forgetting about it. <laughs> He's okay. always watching. <laughs> He's always watching. Um, it takes you a little bit longer than you would have liked. Uh, um, and with only a few hours left before the next dawn, uh, um, your breathing getting caught in your throat, uh, um, yet it almost feels like with every passing second, the news is getting a little bit tighter. Um, but uh, sure enough, you, there is an alleyway where um, you spot somebody who seems to be alone um, and passed out. Um, it, it smells really strongly like, like alcohol in here and like sweat. Um, it's dark and as far as you can tell, there is uh, um, only one person there besides you. Pip will walk slowly up towards this person. Are you trying to be quiet? Yes. I'll take a stealth roll. You walk all the way up to this person, just slumped against a wall, 
Um, the way he's facing you, coming up from uh, pretty much his left. Um, it's too dark to really distinguish any any features. Uh, um, just seems to be uh, a person bigger than you, an, an adult. Um, pretty much all you're getting, and you're not uh, um, spotting any reaction from him. You just hear his heavy breathing. Does he seem okay? Uh, what did you roll? Uh, 16? He seems alive! Okay? Mm. Does he have any sort of coin purse next to him? On his side? That you can see? No. So it's an al it's an alleyway, yeah. Just mm -hmm. uh, okay. <clears throat> Pip will put his hand on his shoulder. <laughs> okay. Um, the man startles for a moment, and then his breathing uh, um, becomes steady again. Um, he d doesn't seem to wake up from it. <laughs> Pip will feel around in his pockets. <laughs> Uh, I was gonna make your roll sleight of hand, but since I rolled this, uh, he's, he's, um, yeah, you search through his pockets, uh, um, and uh, when you when you hear uh, the the sound of metal against metal, uh, you you focus on a particular pocket, and at first you just find a, a ring of keys, but beneath them, um, you find a silver coin. Okay, Pip will. Snatch that, and uh, he he turns around and starts to walk away, and, and then he just looks back, and and then Pip keeps walking, and uh, once he gets. Um, once he gets outside uh, and he, he steps around the building and uh, he tells Squeak telepathically to go and do one final thing before he goes okay. uh, and he tells Squeak to run over to the end of the uh, alleyway and say uh, just shout loudly Hey, uh, can I get some help over here? There's this, there's this guy. He's, uh, he doesn't look too good. <laughs> okay. Squeak does that. And then, uh, Pip will pop Squeak back to his own shoulder and, and, uh, Head back to the inn. All right. Noted. To the dragon wagon. Uh, the rest of the group waiting anxiously in their room. Uh, Talix just focusing on the on the feeling of the leaf, uh, but <clears throat> Pip returns with the leaf still in hand. Um. <clears throat> Still not looking like himself? Uh, I think he would have dropped it at some point on the way back. Okay, sure. Uh, then Pip rejoins you. Good to see you back. This was took all you he so had. long. This was all he had. He holds up the silver coin. Mm. 
I'm sorry. Uh, Squeak uh, sort of flaps over to the bed uh, after transitioning into an imp and holds out the bag and just says, Well, give it a try. And Pip is going to walk over and drop the coin in and then reach into his pouch and grab out the three seeds, one of the first things that he collected on this journey. And Pip will just repeat uh, one more time the rhyme that Granny gave him before he head out. Um, To loose the first of binding curse, you'll bring me this list of three. One coin thieved by wicked knave, pauper victim left to crave. Two faux blades from iron rot, wet with blood from last they fought. And three nut seeds of tree long stood, found within a sacred wood. With uh, every item uh, delivered in a pouch, at the end of the rhyme, you wait, everyone tenses up a little bit, and the first sound you hear is the hissing of Pontifex's Tressim, uh, who moves away, uh, basically so that she positions herself so that Pontifex is between her and Pip. And moments later, from the pouch begins to emerge um, a, well first, a small spider. Then another, then another, another, and another. Hundreds and hundreds of small spiders crawling out of his bag and onto Pip's uh, belly and up his chest and onto his neck. And they begin to all mm-hmm. gather around the nose. Uh, and they, they just skittle all across your body. And some begin to disperse a little bit. They, they're crowded on the floor around him. And then they begin to move back into the pouch uh, one by one. Uh, after about a minute of them being uh, all over you. <clears throat> and by the time they're all gone, the noose around your neck has one less knot. Uh, and there is uh, something in each of your hands. Uh, Pip? <clears throat> Uh, one feels cold and somewhat uh, somewhat round. Uh, as you look down at it, it is a rock. It's not the rock. It's not the one that's been taken by you, but it's a, it's a new one. It's a different one. It's pretty. Um, there is... Um, there is a pretty green shimmer to it. Uh, um, as, you, as you hold it up... Uh, um, and you like tilt it a little bit. Uh, uh, it, it almost feels like it's made of of metal in a way. It's pleasantly smooth and a little cold. <clears throat> uh, in your other hand is a small piece of paper with uh, the next list of ingredients for you to collect, which I will give you next session. Ooh. <laughs> wow. I was wondering. Sorry, I, I I've been slacking. I kind of it slipped my mind. Oh no! It, what? No no no! It's not, it's not on you. <laughs> okay. Oh man. Wait, hold on. Hmm? Jason, do you control my list? <laughs> no, I don't. I don't control the ingredients, and I don't know what it's adding up oh. to. Oh, <laughs> okay. No, I I just. Try to think of rhymes. Yes, well. it's <laughs> with the rhymes. Rhyme guy. Rhyme yeah. guy. Well, well, well. Cold I hope today's and session. Green rock. <laughs> <clears throat> I hope today's session was to your liking. Yeah, it was good. For sure. It was good. We. We had Fight Club. <laughs> we did it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Loopholes? <laughs> <laughs> mm. 
unless this is what I mean, in D&D, what, what's, what's, a, what's a stab with a dagger? Basically nothing. I feel like the suffering that was inflicted on all of us was <laughs> plenty enough <laughs> to count. Woo! Well, thanks for stabbing each other for me. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> what's your friends for? I've been waiting for this forever. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, an excuse to stab Talix. <laughs> oh. I want to play more, though. <laughs> so you fought both. You said you fought humans and elves. In the With me? Yeah. I mean. Technically, if I read it correctly, right, said then elves have also lived in the bordering countries. Correct? Huh? And not only Elimia. I so what? I'd assume I'd, I fought elves as well. El el elves live in Elinarden. Only? The... They, they live there now. Oh, I... I s I think I see where that came from. Like, elves sort of the elves and the gnomes are like the only races uh, that are actually split into their own countries, uh, because they were like pushed away, but by, by the uh, Jade Alliance. Okay. Yeah, um, then I haven't fought elves. <laughs> okay. <All right>. <laughs> <clears throat> I just read that wrong. I thought, since it said like the certain countries had these kind of creatures inhabiting them. Uh, yeah, they but do now. Before the war. Yeah, yeah, they do now. But before the war, it was well, like exclusively. Well, now you've fought both human sandals. True. <laughs> at the same time. True. I guess that's technically right. <laughs> Are you just assuming that you're half human? I, no, I'm. I, it's very much established that I'm half human. <laughs> I had not just come up with that. Right now. I don't know. Could be half tree. Oh, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my <laughs> fantasy. <laughs> all right. I've been praying all these years for. The uh, then right. I'm going to call off the stream here. Uh, but, Will I see you but... next week? Yeah. yeah. Hope so. <laughs> Can I get a sneak peek of the list? Is it like, for future fun, no less mild, bring four fair teeth from orphan child. <laughs> 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 and wow. other fun stuff. <laughs> no, Dang. No, I will get you the list. You should get just to write your list. Dang. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll get you the list, I guess, at some point during the week. <clears throat> um, but, you know, we're, we're going to read it on, on on the next session next week 